going on? I am Nando. And, and I'm DJ. <laughs> it's a good time today, but I ain't get shorter than I'm Dagon. And this is mostly I'm picking a podcast where we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woo! Woo! <laughs> this <laughs> week. Week. Oh boy, we got a we got a movie. Some would say the most watched movie of last year. Some some would say. Yeah. Um, some have said. One have said, yes. And uh, <laughs> they just got a new trailer for the sequel or whatever we're calling part twos of movies, the second half. I don't know. Um, so, and we have a week to kill because we did the Ghostbusters movie and all the King Kong movies already. Uh, so we are going to talk about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon part one. The Scar Giver? I think? A Child of Fire. Oh, A Child of Fire. Okay. Second yeah, one's the Scar Giver. Part two is the Scar Giver. I, yeah. I don't know who the Child of Fire is, but. Yeah, they weren't know. super clear about that, actually. <laughs> I guess Sophia Batella? Is that I our mean, main character? Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. I I mean, I imagine you could <laughs> as say much, it's. The... <laughs> as much as anyone in the movie is a main character, yeah. Yeah, like there's a little, oh, there's like maybe two children in the movie. If you want to count the little blonde girl from the beginning as a child, so it could be her. But then fire, it's like she's not a child of fire. Um, they they workshopped that name, but never gave any thought to like you know, yeah, what it means. It's a cool it's sounding name, con- kind of. It's originally confusing know. because the scar giver is a title that is given to one of the characters in this movie. Yeah. So you would think Child of Fire is also that, but no, never said. No, never said. Hmm. Do you think, because there's a four hour long cut of this movie, do you think that's in that? So I was going to say, <laughs> they explain the Child of Fire. Cut, yeah. Somebody mm-hmm. says the words Child of Fire. I bet it's Anthony Hopkins' robot, probably. That seems like something he would say. <laughs> he, well, he says it or he is the Child of Fire. Oh, says it. Maybe he is it, though. He's He's like a newborn, kind of, technically. So my he vision does, is like a week old. Who knows? He does show up at the end with a crown for no reason. Mm-hmm. And horns. Yeah. He has like well, deer antlers or whatever. Oh, okay. Well, he, he has the flower crown. crown that the girl gives her and then the, right, the weird yeah. deer horns. Yeah. Well, the flower crown's not for no reason because we see it. But then he shows up at the end and he's also got an antler crown. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. I mean, we'll see. Maybe it's cool. Maybe we all loved it. So we're going to talk about that. But first, news. Three news as you guys. One that I guess I deleted from my internet. Okay, here it is. Have uh, you guys heard about the James Bond news this week? Oh, yes. Big, big Bond news. Yeah. So uh, it's not official news, but the uh, reports are that uh, a certain actor that everybody th- said probably could be James Bond in the future might be James Bond in the future. So. Wow. Incredible. Pretty exciting. Uh and uh, it's Craven's own Aaron Taylor Johnson. What else is that? Kick ass. Is this a victory Godzilla for Amer- 2014? Yeah. Is this a victory for Americans? We're going to have an American James Bond. Is he American? Right? He must be, right? I don't think so. I oh, think he's is British. he not? I know. If they cast him yeah. as James Bond, then I feel confident saying he's not. That'd be sick, though. Well, I wish they, he was. They made all. Oh, he's an English actor. Damn it. I was hoping yeah. that we infiltrated somehow. I mean, he's in that bullet train movie as an English guy. So I kind of just assumed I'm sure I've seen interviews with him, but I assume that's what he sounds like normally. But like a little less fake Guy Piercy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen Bullet Train? No, I never saw Bullet Train. Is it good? I don't know. That kind of feels like it's James Bond, uh, like um, audition for me. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, Uh, I'm just finding out that. There is a 24 year age gap between mm-hmm. Aaron Taylor Johnson and his wife. Yeah, it's kind of okay. weird. And you'll you'll never guess which direction it goes in. <sighs> yeah, I there, bet I could. There's there's some weirdness about it too that I don't fully understand. Like the, I don't know enough about it. But if I ask someone who knows stuff, they could explain it to me as like it might be kind of creepy uh, because of how they knew each other or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, we'll see but yeah he's craven now so we'll see maybe that'll be the last thing they need neither like if your craven movie is good you could be james bond so does this does this uh put the kibosh on any hopes for a craven sequel maybe i don't know i mean i, I guess what's know. name did james bond or did other movies besides james bond right that's Daniel true. craig yeah yeah well but also it took them 
eight years to make each of those James Bond movies. Yeah, that's true. So he had plenty of time. Yeah, yeah I um, mean... I mean, I think when Craven breaks all box office records and this is the most successful movie of all time, then I, I don't think he's going to have any choice but to come back for Craven 2. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the biggest question for me is... And I, I had a... Well, I guess two questions. One, it, in his interview... This is what this is one thing they said that I think was interesting. Talking about Craven, this this one. I think there was something unique about this character and something grounded. We've all had enough of seeing certain studio films, a certain kind of pop culture where they're churning out stuff that dilutes wanting to go to the cinema. I wouldn't have signed on to it if I felt there wasn't something to really bring to life with this character. So like that's interesting coming from any actor, but specifically uh one that's about to put out a superhero movie and was Quicksilver before. Yeah, and, and his, historically has a background in superhero movies, right? Like yeah. you said, kick ass, right? Like it's that's yeah, interesting for him to say. It's an interesting thing for one of our okayest men to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess maybe you have to say that, but especially with uh, with uh, what's her name still on the warpath about Madam Web. Oh, I Cody find Johnson. it hard to believe anything a uh, Sony actor says promoting their movie until the movie's out and we all hate it, and then we'll see. If he's she, honest or not, she carved a new path Hell for yeah. trashing a movie while it's in theaters. We need someone to carve the even braver path of trashing the movie in all of like the the press before the movie comes out. Right? Yeah, that would be uncharted territory. And Maybe. she almost uh, Nick could do it for Uncharted because they'll probably make a sequel to that. And the first one wasn't very good. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. maybe Mark Wahlberg step up. Oh. Yeah, maybe being named Johnson is a prerequisite to being able to do that. Mm, maybe it, is Aaron Taylor Johnson a nepo baby? Probably. Do, 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 <laughs> what do you Hollywood, count his marriage? Why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a, uh, and I think he's married to a producer. I want to say, uh, uh, filmmaker is what it says on this Wikipedia page. Okay, mm. so that's producer, but doesn't want to be a producer but i feel like that's gotta be it i doubt she's a direct i feel like no directors ever are like i'm a filmmaker they're always like i'm a director i'm not a producer (laughs) she is a director really yeah Mm. she hasn't made many uh one of them was 50 shades of gray there it is oh so she's got the johnson to johnson connection all 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 in the Mm. family huh it's all in the family fascinating well, wow. I don't think that she's related to Dakota Johnson. No, but she knows her, maybe. Yeah, Especially right. Especially because it's... Aaron is the one who brings the, the Johnson to Taylor Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, I don't know, man. This movie, this Craven movie is going to be weird. I hope it comes out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you think it won't? I don't know. Like, if there like... was ever a movie to not bother with and, like, you know... Especially in the aftermath of Madam Web, I could see a world where they don't put it out. They're just like, actually, we're just gonna like cut our losses and say yeah. bye bye. I mean, not worth it. I I'm assuming it costs money to make, but like, I don't know. I'm assuming also Sony wants to like maybe stop making these and just make movies with Spider Man. So I don't know. Plus, what's the risk? Maybe he'll say mean things about the movie when it's out. So do you want to even bother putting publicity? <laughs> Now yeah. it's too, it's too dangerous to put our actors yeah. out there because they might trash the movie. Mm-hmm. They might be honest about how bad their movie is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm it looking might, at it. Might become so publicly uh, permissible to talk about how bad your movie is that Jimmy Kimmel makes a joke about it at the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. He was That's okay. The greatest of tragedies. <laughs> but he. Uh, yeah, Aaron Taylor Johnson, not an Epo baby from what I can read. Apparently okay, his no. dad was an engineer and his mom was a stay-at-home odd jobs working mom, something like that. Okay. So he he's a been acting forever though, apparently. He started acting in the age of at the age of six. Uh okay. So he's one of those uh, forever actors. And appeared mm-hmm. twelve years later, met his wife. Yep. <laughs> Good for him, I guess. I don't know. Uh but yeah, Craven coming out soon, everybody get excited. Um, get your tickets. What else have I got? Speaking of get your tickets, uh, not really, but uh, I, today we're recording this on March 20th, but as I'm sure you guys remember, March 18th, 2021 was when Zack Snyder's Justice League was released on HBO Max. 
Uh, wow. And to celebrate the Snyder anniversary, Zack Snyder posted a new picture of Jared Leto as Joker from when they made that. So not another one. Don't worry. But um, <laughs> I was worried. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, it's pretty good. So remember Dude, that? That was oh, three years ago we did That's that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's insane. Crazy. Oof. So that feels like just yesterday that I yeah, had prob- to watch that movie. Partially because of this, I think this movie made me remember what that what it was like to watch that movie. Reminded but, you of the pain, and just remind me of some of the things where I'm like, I guess he loves the Nords, you know? Like, remember when they had <laughs> they sang to Aquaman and stuff, and that they movie, and I was Aquaman. like, why are they doing this? Just like he loves that, so it makes it into all his movies. Um, he has probably great other respect stuff for too. them. Yeah, he's a big fan. Uh, but that, so there's that, but, uh, the only other news I want to talk about is a new universe of movies that apparently is starting and I don't even want to give them attention, but I do think we have to talk about it a teeny tiny bit. Cause it's weird. Uh, have you guys heard about the poo universe? I, I knew have. you were going to bring this up as soon as you said the universe. Yep. So there's, we're getting a poo universe, you guys. And no, it's not as fun as it sounds. It's not a universe <laughs> of poon. It is a universe about these weird Winnie the Pooh knockoff movies. Uh, they announced a couple. Have you guys seen the movies they announced that are not Winnie the Pooh specific ones? Uh, I forget yeah. already. It's yeah. this was such forgettable news. Okay, well, do you want to take a guess? Want to take a guess that these are other characters that are in the public domain, although not Steamboat Willie for some reason. Um, even though I'm sure none of these movies have been made besides like the other Winnie the Pooh one. Uh, but we're not we're not getting like a Tigger movie, are we? That's not one of these. No, things. none of them are spinoffs of Winnie the Pooh. They're all okay. like the, the Thor only, and Captain America of this of this universe. The only connective tissue is that they are also public domain. They're also public domain and kind of Disney guys. That's okay. the other one thing. Of, that is one of Pinocchio. Guys. That's right, Pinocchio unstrung. Wow. Yep. Unstrung. Oh no. I mean, listen. Out of he's all of these, strung out and unstrung. <laughs> that's listen. the one that I think has potential to be a horror movie. He's a pretty scary, weird guy. We already managed one surprisingly good, weird Pinocchio horror take mm-hmm. uh, in that video game, Lies of P. Yeah. I don't think we can manage two. <laughs> Hush your mouth. Yeah, you. Hush can. your mouth. This is for all the the rest of us that didn't play that game. Although I haven't watched either of these Moon the Pooh movies, so who knows? Um, but then there's two others that I think are more unusual, but I find incredibly curious. Um, Peter take a guess. Pan? Yeah, one of them is Peter Pan Neverland Nightmare. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be the bad guy or if he's going to be the good guy and Cat Milk's going to be the bad guy, but I'm getting that. God, these are so stupid. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's ridiculous. I don't know. They put out like a promotional picture that has some of the guys in it, but it does not. I cannot find the Peter Pan or Captain Hook characters in this. So I'm not sure they probably figured it out yet. But imagine them, but with like big old eyes and scary nose or something. I don't know. I think um, the real question is how much of these movies is going to be generated by AI? I, I could see it being a lot, but also uh, well, probably the script for sure. That's the thing that you can use to generate AI. Do you think they could get Wonka involved? You know, Wonka oh, McDuff. You mean McDuff? The, yeah. the unknown. And the unknown? <laughs> yeah. They've already, the unknown. they've already greenlit the movie about the unknown. That's true. They have. It's the and, unknown. <laughs> that, that guy apparently said this has ruined his life. And what? Like, no. Yeah, him but, making children cry? And one of the other things we learned about him is he wrote 16 books last year using AI that are on Amazon. So oh, no, one of those cool grifters. Rick, what you so, I guess. Yeah. But uh, the other movie that they're making besides those two is Bambi the Reckoning. Uh, oh. If you've seen the poster in the poster, Winnie the Pooh is riding a Bambi zombie. So, <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Incredible. So I. We- Go ahead, I Dickens. didn't think Bambi was in the public domain. I mean, Bambi's a pretty old movie, but I don't know what. Oh, I imagine it's, it's based. It's based on a book, which I did not know. Yeah, from 1923. So, so there you go. Just came in. Yeah, that right is probably liner. in the public domain. How are there not lawsuits abound? I feel like this is just rife for lawsuits. What do, would you even that's get the, from them? 
that's the point of public domain, DJ, is that you can just do this sort of thing. I just assume that in our late stage capitalism world that all the companies have decided that there is no such thing as public domain anymore and they own everything. Yeah, so. I mean, it does seem like one of the things, one of the only things I know about this public domain stuff, uh, like the rules is that like for Winnie the Pooh, he can't have a red shirt or something because that is okay. a Disney invention. And their one here on this picture has a red shirt. So I don't know. <laughs> So there are no rules. Yeah. It's all it's all nonsense. But also, like, I'm not as I don't think these guys have a lot of money. Maybe the Winnie the Pooh movie made him money though. I don't know. Mm. Not from what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, how much could it have possibly cost to make? You know, like, right if, right. if it sold 20 tickets, was that enough? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Halloween masks usually mm -hmm. run you, you know, 20, 30 bucks at least. And they needed all the filming equipment. And from what I've seen based on that trailer, they used that um, Game Boy Advance game that had a little camera on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, so let's yeah, see. Yeah, probably getting that from a collector. Probably cost like 100 bucks, maybe. Yeah, so the budget... Do you want anyone want to take a guess at the budget for this? $500. <laughs> I was going to say 30000 DJ's closer. According to this, it's a hundred thousand dollars. You gotta pay the actors, right? You gotta pay the actors, right? Do you? <laughs> Allegedly, but yeah. again, late stage capitalism—they don't want to. Mm -hmm. They don't, would rather not. We would for not even for money saving reasons, but for pure ideological reasons, we try to spend as little money as possible on the human beings who make anything we do. Right, yeah, it's right, the rules. Right. You can't spend more money, otherwise the shareholders get to sue you. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at it now, though. Box office, $5.2 million. So they probably they That's made a nice good. chunk of change on this. Wow. Disney should come wow, and get wow, it because wow. it's way before them. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Disney just takes their last $5 million. Might as well. I mean, I don't know. Now that, now that Craven's coming out, nobody's going to want to see like superhero movies that aren't Craven anymore. So they're not going to get money from that. That's Obviously, true. there's no Star Wars anymore because of Rebel Moon. So, like, what do they have left? It's the Snow White movie that that Breitbart or that Daily Wire is making is going to get all those, you You're know, gonna start, shut gonna down. Take all the money for live action remakes. Yeah. You're going to have to figure out what those Muppets are up to. That's they're going to be their only <laughs> ticket out of this. So, that Disney would would rather be lying cold in a grave <laughs> than do something with the Muppets, Nando. It would be, and it. You know what? At that point, I respect it. Uh, because they're, they're Muppets. They're funny and we don't need them. Um, you know, it's not funny and we do need Zack Snyder, Zack More Snyder's Rebel Moon part oh. one, colon, the child of fire. You Ooh, guys, a child of ice and fire. Some Ooh. Would say. Ooh. You think they were trying to get that SEO? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Mm. I would put it on the Game him. of Thrones bandwagon right after yeah. Kareem's off the cliff. <laughs> it's so hot right now. Yeah. Everyone loves the House of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's coming back, apparently. It's coming back. Yep. I watched it. It's fine. I don't know. I didn't watch it, and I assume that's true. Yeah. It's like I one of those. I didn't watch it because they can't trick me again. <laughs> well, <laughs> joke's on you. I was tricked, and I'll just tell you. It's what you expect. They're dragons and um, incest and stuff. Dragons blonde. and incest? Ble Whoa. Yeah, and bleach My two blonde favorite people things. were bad. Uh, what else? What else? What else? A guy who's got slippery kind of like, ooh, what's that guy up to? Uh, also, it's way too dark. Um, like day for night kind of stuff that just doesn't work. So, yeah, it's pretty similar. Like that fight everyone was mad about? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. They put that out, and then they were like, your TVs are bad. <laughs> you <laughs> missed it. That was so good. I was like, yeah, I know, but we watched the rest of them, right? I said, uh, did something happen to our TVs? They just weren't good enough. I respect being negged. <laughs> Me too. Right. Especially for that episode, you know? They could have just shown a black screen and went, you couldn't see it. But, you know, <laughs> you just figure out what you wanted to happen. It happened. That guy killed the Night King. I don't know, Jamie? You tell me. <laughs> it's like that. What's that plot hole in that movie that the director's like, we haven't figured it out yet. It happened recently. I feel like you're going to need to be more specific than that. It was something. It's something that. I think we watched it. I know. Oh, it's the uh, true detective. 
there's like a plot hole and by plot hole i mean like an unexplained mystery element that seems to be kind of magical and people ask the directors like so what was that because they explained everything else and the director was like you figure it out whatever your theories are that could be it so you know Hmm. that's gonna be some of that's in here too there's there's some things that are left up to interpretation we'll talk about them um when we talk about rebel moon so very exciting you guys yeah so you say so yeah why are we doing this one because the new one's coming out yeah you explained it yeah Yeah, new one comes out we have after this week right it's like ghostbusters Mm -hmm. and kong and other monkey movie and then monkey man right there's just it's Ghostbusters and monkey movies till the so till there's no more time. Yeah, and we don't know for sure that there are zero monkeys in Ghostbusters. That's true. That's true. They it takes place in New York. Library. Yeah, King Kong's favorite zoo. place to go. That yeah. So maybe he comes home from it. Now that I think about it, did the King Kong in the MonsterVerse ever go to New York? Not that we I don't seen. know. Yeah, that's weird think they're saving that so does the movie king kong not exist in the monster verse also i'm gonna say no it can't because there's real skull island like that that part of it i think would be enough that a character would have to go like although i could also see them putting out like the monarch would put out that movie to make the public think that they're it's not real if they hear rumors about it but also they don't discover skull island until the 70s yeah, that's true. I guess it got long after when Godzilla or uh, King Kong came out. I don't know. So I would assume there's no Godzilla movies because this is a world where Godzilla is real. Yeah, which means there's no Godzilla vs Kong, the original from the fifties. Well, but they don't know about Godzilla until like, oh, well, that's unclear because of the show, which I did watch. Like, certain people kind of know about maybe Godzilla, but nobody knows exactly. Like, Godzilla hasn't done any really public Godzilla attacks, I believe, until the one from the movie with uh, future James Bond, previous Craven, Eric Taylor Johnson. Right. So, uh, But they're, they're, the first movie does imply that Godzilla has been responsible for many world events, including the Spanish-American War. That's right, yeah. I mean... And it's one of those. It's like, yeah, he's Chernobyl and all the... Any kind of conflict that kind of you didn't know about and also yeah spanish american war which one was the spanish american war uh, uh early 1900s like uh yeah like 1902 i want to say but wasn't earlier. godzilla the product of like nuclear kind of experimentation not, not this godzilla oh i guess that's true yeah but they they do it in the show i guess they try to bomb it with the nuke and it doesn't work i don't know the show's weird you can do the show one day. He still but, absorbs radiation, but his yeah. radiation comes from the hollow earth civilization. Their cities right. are all irradiated. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, 1898. I was hmm. almost right. Okay. I mean, maybe we'll find out in the new one. Um, maybe it'll be like that Transformers movie where, remember this? The, the most recent one we watched where they walk past a wall of pictures of like all the wars, like the Napoleon Wars, but there's a Transformer there. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Wait, no, that's not the most recent one. The most recent one was the Beast Wars one. Oh, this is the most recent. Oh, yeah, I guess there was the Beast Wars one. I forgot about that. I was going to say the most recent one was Bumblebee, but you're right. They did make a Beast Wars one. Well, that wasn't a Transformers movie. That was a G.I. Joe movie disguised as a Transformers movie, <laughs> so I refuse to count it. Fair hey, point. speaking of movies disguised as other movies, let's talk about Rebel Moon. You guys, they disguised made Rebel Moon. Disguised as charitable. Yeah. Um... I want to ask this. I don't think either of you had seen this before now, right? No. Okay. I barely knew what it was about or I, like anything detailed about it. I will never watch a Zack Snyder movie under anything other than duress. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's a good call. We got some duress, so we're, we're doing this one. I was going to say this is a, according to Zack Snyder, this is one of the most watched movies of last year on a podcast. Oh. He said 90 million people saw it or something. Or it got 90 million views, which by his metrics was 180 million people. Right, because so, on average, views are two people. Yes. And uh, so nine, 180 million cats mm-hmm. landed, on, sat on a remote that turned on Rebel Moon? Well, 180 million cats sat on a remote, and then another cat came into the room. 
So there were two cats on so average nine, in each room. 90 million cats. Or, excuse me, 90 million cats. And then yeah. another cat walked into the room. Okay. That's okay, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> or or one cat sat on a remote and 190 million cats went into that room. And then every other cat was one, you know, one cat watching it alone on their phone. Um, but yeah, he was on a podcast. I believe it was the Joe Rogan podcast because that's where stuff comes from. Course, that isn't fact checked or, or uh, followed upon. Where he said that the uh, yeah, this movie, if it had gone into theaters, it would have made one or two billion dollars, which would make it more. Uh, it would have made more money than Barbie, which uh, I think I think two billion is actually conservative. I think he said something like six billion. Might as well six trillion. <laughs> you never know. So this is getting nominated for the Oscar. Well, I mean, probably it's the Speed late. Force Oscar last year. Oh, right. Yeah. So part two will get nominated for the Oscar. Yeah, that's right. how they usually do it. They don't tend to give sci-fi number ones the Oscar. Yeah, like how Return of the King won a bunch of Oscars yes. that everyone understood was yeah. for the whole trilogy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So they'll give Rebel Moon part two, the Scar Giver. The Scar Giver. Yeah. And also, like, uh, what was I saying? Did you? I thought it was interesting that he picked Barbie. Um, is there yeah, anything in Barbie right. that made you think he might have some? secret like he said in the interview it's like i don't have a grudge against barbie whatever and then he was like but my movie would have made more money than barbie though you know yeah. doesn't even matter no, but, no hard feelings right yeah it's, jeez he hasn't yeah. called out oh. by name in the barbie movie <laughs> oh yeah he is yeah oh i forgot I don't know he seems he seems nice anyway we got to talk about rebel moon part one a child of fire you guys i have the summary of it from imdb.com uh, it comes from imdb.com, but uh, that is only because it shows up on imdb.com. Um, and the way this works is pretty strange, but it, it's not unprecedented. I think they do this for other stuff. Like, I think this is how uh, I think this is how they wrote uh, Da Vinci Code is there's a haunted house um, and you put a computer in the haunted house. You turn it on to Microsoft Word and you just leave it alone for a weekend and it types a bunch of stuff. And fills and you fill in like the words, you know, scar giver and stuff, the specific words. But then that becomes the IMDb summary for specific movies uh, that are going to release that weekend. So uh, and I guess that counts for Netflix stuff, too. I I mean, they released. I I don't know. Did this get a theatrical release? It got a very limited theatrical release uh, for a very Mm. brief window of time. Was it a double feature with the Winnie the Pooh movie? (laughs) Maybe. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. They could have uh they could have done it. Oh, this is the other thing. Zack Snyder, you're making a second one of these. Prove it. Put that in theaters and see if it makes more money than Barbie. That way we'll know. Hell yeah. You know? Hell we could yeah. we could find out through this experiment today. Um No, Netflix won't let him. Oh, he would. Mm-hmm. But they're like, <laughs> oh, no, we don't want to. Yeah, it's like the guy who made the Roadhouse says, movie and he was like, Nuh-uh. they wouldn't let me put it in theaters. And they were like, We would have, but we would have paid you a little bit less. And he was like, Oh no. That's not true. <laughs> um the movie looks cool though. Uh, speaking of movies with Irish people in them, we got to talk about Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part One: A Child of Fire, because uh, that one has that one Irish guy. What's his name? Conor McGregor is in the uh, Roadhouse movie, I think. He's in Roadhouse. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of those cool new Amazon movies where you can bet on the Roadhouse fight in the Amazon app. So we're all really excited for that. Oh, cool! Yeah, my bets on Roadhouse kind of personally, but I don't know. Maybe it'll go the other way. Uh, but you guys, I have the summary right now in front of me. All right. And let me tell you, uh, it's okay. You know what? This isn't bad. It's okay. That's yeah, this, this tells a pretty complete kind of something. Like, it's a summary. Um, you know, some of the details may not be the ones you would expect, or maybe they will. You'll see. But um, DJ, as last week's loser... Uh, you like have to go first. Loser. I'm on a yeah. terrible run, mostly because of BS tiebreaker. So we won't talk about that because if I'm winning you, outright, you made an no. agreement. That's true. I'm not talking about last week. I'm talking about some other weeks. Um, all right. I well, Diggins is gonna go first. Says me. Okay. Oh, Nando, can you repeat the hint? The hint is just like it's okay. It kind of does it. Um, I don't think it's like the best summary ever, but it like. I think if anything, the main problem is that I don't not problem, but the thing that I'm looking at it is like it's a little bit more generic, I guess, than you'd kind of expect. Uh, but you know, it's more all generic than I would expect for this movie. That's yeah, impressive. 
I don't know. It's fine. I don't think it's nothing in it is a lie. It doesn't seem like it was stolen from a wiki and fed through French then back to English or something. So, you know, I think you'll be, I think you'll both be okay to just take your shot at a good summary for this movie and you'll get something. All right. Now that I've bought myself a bunch of time, mm-hmm. um, when, when her home is threatened by, an imperial admiral, Cora, uh, former soldier turned farmer, Cora, must gather together a force of outcasts, criminals, and rebels to stand against the might of an empire. Okay. DJ? Do I think the summary made Korra the main character? Okay. Um, Okay. Um, After an attack on a humble farming planet, a reluctant soldier, a reluctant former soldier hiding amongst the villagers must gather a group of reluctant heroes to fight against the empire's tyranny. Okay. So like DJ yours was pretty good. Uh, uh, Like, but like you didn't get any of the specifics or like neither of you really got any of the like specifics. I think DJ's was a little better, uh, so Diggins, you said you said like a word that was correct. Uh, DJ also had at least one or two words that were correct, but like every time you guys got close to it, you kind of veered off course. So that, that's that's, nice. that's tricky. Nice. Um, I'm used to hearing that. Yeah, Hey-o. so I think we'll have to go for the uh, for the tiebreaker here. Um, oh no, not the. Tie I don't know if I want to do the name one though. Um, I think, what? I think you should do the cool new one you were talking about. I I mean. Did, Diggins, DJ wants to do the name one again, it seems like. So again, it seems like maybe I he's feel, practiced. I, yeah, I do feel ready Yeah, so that's why I think you should do the cool new one to throw us both for a curve. Oh, uh, I, I don't know, know what the new one it. is. Now I want to see Diggins take a shot at when he's not completely ready for it. That could be fun. Um, it's not that I don't think I'm ready for it. I just think it would be more fun to, to uh, head fake DJ after he mm. uh, got ready for this one. So this is the third week in a row of of me doing the bad tiebreaker, right? I lost DJ, you surrendered all right to complain about the tiebreaker. Do you forget? I'm not complaining about the tiebreaker. You called it the bad tiebreaker. Oh, fine. (laughs) This is the third week of the uh, new tiebreaker format. And Mm. I, I think I'm the only one who hasn't won it. You have both won it. That's true. Shouldn't I be given a chance to win it? I think that's a good You've point. Been given two chances to win it. All right. Well, shouldn't I be given a third chance to win it? I mean, if you want to, I think this is a good idea. I do want to give DJ a if, third shot. If Diggins I'll agrees, do it. But, I, right, just, cool. I just wanted the curveball, but I'll All do right. it. So this is going to be interesting uh, because that's not, you know, this is not a... I mean, look, you can kind of see some stars here, but they're not the kind of stars that you would expect uh, from a big giant movie. So some of them may not be people who you'll recommend or you'll remember the names of. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this goes. Um, but sure, we'll do this this one. On Diggins, you get to decide who goes first or second. No, I get uh, to decide who goes first or second. We're going to do, or DJ, you no, get to decide, right? Yeah, I get to decide. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I have to come up with a name for this, but I'm thinking characters welcome or something. I don't know. But we have to pick up <laughs> the USA names. Are now? Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're in the USA right now. Um, so yeah, we get to pick the characters. What you have to do is name an actor that was in this movie and then name a character that they played in another movie or show or like I'll take a video game or whatever. Um, if it has, it cannot be, the name cannot be the title. If their full name is the I, I don't think for me, as the judge, the name can be the title. Diggins had like a qualifier where like he could have been like, oh, well, if you give me the first name, if it's only the last name. But I, I don't even like that. Um, the other thing was uh, you get one per cinematic universe, which is important. Um, 
uh, and somewhat limiting, perhaps. We'll see. Uh, and yeah, DJ, who do you want to go first? All right, uh, I'm gonna go first. Okay. And I, I'm just gonna take a big one off the board to start. I'm gonna go Anthony Hopkins, Odin, Thor. Okay. All right. Correct. I'm gonna take an take another big one off the board and say Jimin Hansu, the Wizard, Shazam. Yeah, mm. that was okay. Correct. Um, and that's go, like eight Anthony- Jimin Hansus off the board because he's in every one of these <laughs> damn movies. <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye to the fisherman king from aquaman um all right we're gonna go with uh anthony hopkins uh dr ford in westworld that sounds right uh let me check i buy that like i watched westworld and i kind of remember that um but then it got kind of boring uh why is it not on his wikipedia page I, oh here we go yeah dr Doctor okay. Ford, do you want to take a guess? I don't. I don't really. I'm not gonna give you more points or something. Do you? That is first name. I love this part. Uh, I'm with Simon. No, it's uh, he's Doctor Robert Ford. Robert, oh, a ro- a sick. word very much like robot. So okay. maybe oh, that's why. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Um, what did you think? But yeah, he was Doctor Ford. Uh, Diggins, what about you? Uh, Sophia Batella was Gazelle in in uh, Kingsman. Yes, Oops. Kingsman. Kingsman. What? Kingsman: The Secret Service. Yes, correct. Oh, I love um, that. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the Charlie Hunnam verse, and we're gonna go Charlie Hunnam, Riley, Pacific Rim. Okay, that's correct. Oh, well, let's what? see. Let's see. Let's see. That's I'm looking right. it up. Yeah, you're cl- you're really close. It. I mean, like, if listen. I say it, if I if say his it character in this correctly. movie said it, that might be it. Um, but technically his name is not, say what you thought his name was again. It's, I mean, it, it's Riley, but like, uh, it's not Riley. It's not. Like I said, you're close, but not quite there. What? Uh, all right. um, mm, This feels like some conspiracy. How about this? DJ, if you can give me this character's last name. I'll oh, there's give you, no fucking way. There's I think no you way. You might be able to. Well, Diggins, would you like to try for a steal? That character's name is Raleigh Beckett. Yeah, it is Raleigh. R A L E I G H. Like the capital of North Carolina. And yeah, like like that American I, name. I I mean, is listen, a different I, name. I. I that's like if we were to ask someone to pronounce it, like what's it? It's like Riley, 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 Riley. What is? What, <laughs> what is? Who has just joined us on the podcast right now? Yeah. Who's this fellow? Man from the south, Riley, Good Riley. Is, uh, this is crazy. Here. This is all right. D- D- it's do you literally even, not his name. D- like it is though. It's really not. I, I, like. Do you, do you have another one, Diggins? Do you have another one for this game? Oh, sure. Sophia Batella is Princess Amanet in the Tom Cruise Mummy. Mm. Does it definitely says Amanet. Is she a princess? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I'm oh. Gonna, I'm going to oh. let the game continue. I'm going to give Diggins the advantage, much like tennis. Uh, but I am wow. going to keep it going because you have to win with the point. Uh, because there's more game to be had. And also, I just want to see if DJ has any more. Um I don't well, think was Diggins right with his? Can we nitpick his guesses since uh, we're nitpicking mine now? I'm I'm going through the IMTB. I'm trying to get back to it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was her name. If it wasn't Aminette, my only question is was she a princess or was she something else? But I think that's probably what it was. Uh it just says Aminette here. So like A H M A N E T. Yeah, so that's probably it. Um All right. Uh so yeah, so DJ, do you have another one? I I do. So this is like my back pocket one that I kept. That I'm like, well, they, I'm just gonna let this go out there. So I got Ray Fisher, Cyborg, uh, Justice League. Can't so again, it. that that would not be correct because what? we've already done Shazam when the Wizard Shazam. We already did the takes DCEU. place in the DCEU. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Want to well, try again? Any other Ray Fishers? Yeah. Uh, pfft. Yeah, pick another Ray Fisher movie. No, pick pick another. There's a couple of actors in here. I will say, I had kind of forgotten about them, or like I wasn't super like trained on them the I same way that I am. More. 
But there are some other pretty big character names in here. I mean, there's one that I'm shocked nobody has given me. Uh, That's because, probably my next one. Yeah, because of how pervasive it is. Um, but then there's other ones where you're like, oh, yeah, we all know his name. So How pervasive it is in this movie? Well, kind of, yeah. Uh, you'll you'll understand when I say it. To say. Oh, okay. Um, <sighs> um, man, that was like my back pocket trick shot double bang. I, I wasn't ready for the. That's um, why I. That's why I hit you with the wizard. Yeah. Why am I so bad? At There's the, so many options. Game? Are is there? I think is there's there that at least options? one other Jimin Hansu character you know the name of. I mean, like, well, I, I can't got use Kor- three I can't use Kor- I can't in use the Kor- chamber. I can't use Korath because, like, that's Marvel's gun. You have three in the chamber. Yeah, dude. <sighs> I mean, there are there are quite a few other ones. I mean, there's some there's some from things that like I haven't seen that I'm like I guess like I know the name of that character, but I haven't seen that thing, so I wouldn't know to guess him. But um, like I know Jimin Hansu's Jimin in, Hansu's in, everywhere. He's in one yeah. of the Fast movies. Yeah, he's in the yeah. one where they're jumping. He's in seven. He's a, he's in Furious Seven. He is well, but, DJ. Yeah, he's uh, naming to that. To quote myself from last week, I need a name. Yeah, I don't have a great feeling about your ability to guess his character's name in this movie. <laughs> um, I I got three Jimin Hansus in the chamber. Let alone what I have for other people. I don't. I, I don't even have believe to that. But I can't wait I, to see it. So. It's very clear that I lose. I, only have two I think we have to retire this game forever. Just because, I mean, like, apparently. you demanded such... that we play. What? No, because I'm like, well, certainly D- Diggins can't have this many. I I came prepared, and I I I I was hoisted by my own petard. It's you know what it is. It's it's I, you guys just have that. Like it's it's me trying to play you guys in this game is like me trying to play one on one basketball with any professional or D league or college or high school level basketball athlete. It's just the advantages are too top heavy. Like, wh- like DJ flattery my... will only get you very far. So you get <laughs> another chance, take another shot. Oh, I'm, I'm out, man. There's no, like, <laughs> I, I, I can't even, oh my God, you guys are, you're killing can I, me. <laughs> can I just, it, can I just a, kick him in the stomach over and over again? Just go through is, with what I got. Yeah, go Wait, for I, it. You said you gave up DJ. Well, I was wondering what Nanda is it a Jimin Hansu one that the ones that no. like screaming like, the the oh, Jimin Hansu okay. one. There's a Jimin Hansu one in here that I'm like, oh yeah, you guys definitely have both. Well, I don't know about definitely both seen this thing. I think one of you has. Um, and like, it it's a thing that he's like, I don't know, pretty, like, like I wouldn't remember this, but uh, I think this one's a good. This would be a good poll. There's also something else that's kind of recent that he's done that I'd be like, you might remember the name of this character. Um, I would even take this character's last name if that was all you had. Uh, so, yeah, what are your sh- ones, Diggins? So we got Jenna Malone is Joanna Mason in Hunger Games Catching Fire. Yep, Damn. she's in those. Uh, we got Jimin Hansu is uh, Papa Midnight in Constantine. Oh, yeah, he is in those. And that is one that mm-hmm. is not in universe with the other ones not yet. In universe. Yeah. Uh, Jimin Hansu is Drago Bloodvist in How to Train Your Dragon 2. Yeah, so he has a couple of voice roles like that where you'd be like, "Oh right, yeah, he wasn't that thing." Um, and that's that's a good one. Um, I can't c- fully remember this one. Corey Stahl is Peter something in House of Cards. Yeah, this is one that I have Peter drilled into my head. Norcross, no that's Russo, not that. Representative Peter Russo, Russo Peter from Russo. Pennsylvania. Yeah, um, he got out at just the right time, but. Uh, <laughs> He like he doesn't make it past the first season. I think spoilers yeah, for a show no, no one watches anymore. Um, I don't think it airs anymore. I think they finished it. Yeah, but I don't think anybody goes back and is like, let's see about that. You know, uh, I mean, maybe Fair. people do. Um, what are the other ones that I thought were pretty good that uh, that were left on the board? Um, nobody took a shot at, and I would have taken her uh, like code name in Argyle, Sophia Butella's character in that which I can't even remember what it was, but if one of you said it confidently, I think she was a character called like the secret keeper or something like that. Forgot um, she was in it. Yep. Same. I am not surprised. Same. Um, 
Neither of you said, uh, where was it? There were a couple good ones. Um, oh, neither of you said any any of the uh, characters played by the king. Do you remember who is the king in this oh, movie? Oh, Carrie Elwes is Wesley in yeah. uh, Princess Bride. Yep. That's uh, the only one that I thought people would know. I, like, I completely forgot. I did have that in the chamber. I just forgot. Yeah, that was a good one. He's been, and he's been in a lot of stuff that like, if you, I mean, if you were a huge fan of like Stranger Things, you might remember the name of his character. He was the oh, mayor God. in that. Um, he shows up all the time. He's in the, the first Saw movie, but I don't know what his name is in that. Um, mm. So that one would have been good. Uh, you know, I would have been impressed if you had one that wasn't the Wesley one, but that, that was a solid one. Um, let's see other actors that are in this that are good. I mean, there's a bazillion other, nobody said fucking uh, Hannibal, which I was, I was shocked. Oh, yeah. um, oh, the most famous one. movie DJ, of any DJ actor in these for sure. was spitting so much fire about all the Anthony Hopkins research he'd done that I decided to just leave Anthony Hopkins for him. Mm. I that was my I, concession. And he, I should have so. said more. The only one I had that I'm remembering now that I forgot is that one time he was the Pope. Don't yes, he was, he the, was Pope? the Pope in that movie. Do you remember the name of the movie? I would have had to ask you this. I it's do. the two popes, right? That's right. Do you remember which, which pope, pope he was? He's, I'm going to guess he's now Pope. He's Pope Benedict. Incorrect. Well, uh, so actually Pope Benedict is correct. However, now Pope is. Pope yeah. Francis. Oh, pope Francis. Now Pope sorry, is a different sorry. one. He also apparently played a uh, Pope like in that movie. Cause I haven't seen it. Uh, oh no, I guess that is that is his name is Cardinal Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger. Yeah, Ratzinger. Yeah, right. that was that was his that's his non papal name. That's right. His his government name. His government name. Yeah. Uh, what other ones did I really like here? Uh, nobody remembered his name from the Beowulf movie. Uh, he's in Anthony Hopkins plays the king in Beowulf. Oh. He's um, Hrothgar. He is Hrothgar in that. He's Hrothgar. He narrates right. a bunch of things, and I would have taken any of them, uh, but I only would have taken narrator for him once. So, for instance, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, a movie he narrates. Oh, um, wow. But there were, there were a couple of them uh, that showed up in this list, like the show Mythic Quest, apparently he is the narrator of. And, you know, I remember him from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I remember him being pretty good in that. I mean, there was no way I was going like five more rounds with Diggins because apparently Diggins I mean, just had name after name after name after name. It was possible. You could have done it. You know what else Snyder said that I thought was not a crazy, but like a, you're going, uh, he's in Zorro and he plays a character who I would have accepted if you could have given him his, his like first name, what he's called as non Zorro. Um, you guys remember that? Don Diego is his character's name. I've in never Zorro. actually watched Zorro. <gasps> You didn't watch Zorro or The Mummy? Nope. Man, so you didn't even know why to have sex in the 1990s. <laughs> like, you weren't, you never had either of those moments where you're like, oh, I see, this is what's going on there. Great. Um, so, missing out, man. Oh, those are good. Sorry, why to have why sex? Why to have sex. Yeah, because you see, you watch the Zorro movie as a child and you're like, I don't really... Make sex, whatever. That seems fun, I guess. But then you watch the Zorro movie and you're like, whoa, I get it now. It's this awakening for me. You know, that's what people say. Um, I think this is a so Antonio was Banderas experience. was your sexual awakening? I mean, he was he, he didn't hurt, you know. He was uh perhaps not the main player, but I uh and I, I honestly I, I think I'm a bigger fan of the mummy movie generally. Uh but I really so loved that Frazier Zorro movie when it came your out. Sexual awakening. No, it was the the Wait. slimy cousin who you don't know who that is, but there's a slimy <laughs> cousin in it. Um, also, here, all right. So the last one I'll say because I don't want to just spend this whole thing going through all their uh, IMDb pages. No, I'd rather do this than talk about Rebel Moon. Um, <laughs> so Ed Screen, the villain of this movie, uh, plays a character in this uh, Atricious Atticious Noble or some shit. I don't know. Um, he was Atticus. in the Deadpool movie. Do you remember his name in the Deadpool movie? He's in absolutely Deadpool. Not. Really? Ajax? No? I would have also taken Francis, the name that Deadpool is throwing around trying to find him uh, with. Um, I thought that was a good one. And uh, as of now, Deadpool is technically not in the MCU, so I would have counted it. Um, uh, He plays a character in the Transporter Refueled that I think would have been probably guessable. Um, (laughs) Absolutely not. Want to take a guess? (laughs) Steven. Frank Martin Jr. He is the son in in transporter oh, movies. So cool. Yeah, and um, I think this is so funny that neither of you got either of them. This movie has both the original Dario Naharis and the actor that replaced him, Ed Screen and Mikhail Huseman, 
from Game of Thrones. Um, oh. Yeah, both both Dario's are in this movie, which for me was the selling point. I was like, are they going to have a Dario off? And it's not in this one, so we'll we'll find out eventually. But yeah. Um, wow. I know. Both Dario's. I don't know if they've been in anything since. Maybe they have. Maybe they're always in movies together. Maybe they're the best of friends. Probably. Yeah, not. maybe they maybe they're just always playing each other in movies. You know? Yeah. Maybe one of them feel like they're like identical twins. They switch on set one day to see if teacher notices, you know, to, to be to be <laughs> clever. Um, so wait, I, 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 have, I have two two points less questions. Uh, one. So, Nato, you did say I had the better summary, so I win. Right. That's how, that's how you had a down. slightly better summary. Definitely oh, yeah. not one winnable. I would say your slightly better summary bought you that uh that second guest thing when you messed up the, Charlie the, the Riley thing which 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 first of all I, I mean, if if the game is not rigged the I have no way to win because if you're giving me like oh it's not Riley it's Raleigh I can't remember like they're what, different it's words diff- it's a very different name <laughs> Like um, no, like Stephen and Bob are very different names. Riley and Riley are like the same. Riley <laughs> and you could, yeah, Riley. 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 We're saying the same thing. This, uh-huh. Listeners, you know, we're we're saying the same thing here. So I can never win this game. I mean, like, again, neither of you did Hannibal. Neither of you did so many of the big guys. I mean, that I did been... research before, and it all, it all just falls out. It all falls That's out. What of my it head. seems like. And so well, so we just we have to retire the game, right? Or I or I lose forever. I mean, I we might. I want lis- listener. I want you to rewind five minutes and just listen to the part of the podcast again where I say let's do a different tiebreaker <laughs> game, no. and DJ insists that we do this one. Yeah. No, and listeners don't have to. I I did. I I pushed for this game because of my confidence. But what I'm seeing now is that I you guys are at like this is like kudos. Like you guys are at an insanely other level than me that I could never, ever reach in my wildest dreams. I can have the sheet of names in front of me. I still wouldn't be able to do it. And, and, and yet, and, and that coupled with, I can't win because it's rigged because I say Riley, Riley, and it's just, no, it's mm-hmm. not Riley, it's Riley. Yeah. Riley, if we're at those it's levels, a, like, I got no shot. It's a real American city with an official pronunciation, DJ. I don't know what you want from us. But that's not true for his name. There's a difference between, like, cities and, like, people. It's names. not true for his name in a movie, a medium in which they say his name out loud, and it's yeah, you know what? Right. You know what I'll say? DJ, if you could show me a clip from this movie where someone says his name and it sounds like Riley uh, in, like, next week or by then, I may reconsider and... Um, play a different game or something as like a makeup game, but Ooh, that's pretty good. I like for that. now. I think I have to assume oh, I lost. No, I know. I kind lost. of got his I... name right in the movie. Otherwise they probably would have yeah. just gone. Oh, fuck. Idris Elba said Riley a bunch of times. I guess his name is Riley now, but um, <laughs> that probably is what happened. Yeah. Um, also, this is an interesting fact about one of the actors that I just didn't come up. Um, but uh, the actor who plays a character in, like inexplicably called the nemesis uh bay duna um was also in jupiter ascending which i'm like that movie was a lot like this good for her it was in all of them (laughs) yeah uh i like jupiter i thought jupiter ascending was kind of fun um so maybe that'll be what i thought of this but diggins as the winner of the game you get to tell me what you thought of Zack snyder's rebel moon part one the child of fire whoever that is. Oh, oh boy. Um, listen, a lot of people when talking about this movie have talked about how it's insanely unoriginal, that it's just <laughs> star Wars and seven samurai mashed together like Barbie dolls. Mm. Um, with Barbie, adding absolutely a movie nothing. that did not get as watched as this movie, as far as we know, as far as we can tell. Yeah. Um, while adding nothing new or original to that mix and having zero twists on that idea. Um, And all of that's true. Um, But I don't think it's what's fundamentally wrong with this movie. I think what's fundamentally wrong with this movie is that nothing happens. (laughs) (laughs) Is that it's a movie... It's a series of individual scenes where a person says, hi, my name's X and watch me do this shit. Mm. And then they do an action scene. And that's the whole movie. 
they for a movie that yeah. is theoretically supposed to be introducing us to all these characters so then there could be the big action packed second half where they all do the the seven samurai thing i don't know a goddamn thing about any of these people yeah and sometimes they don't even do the action scene sometimes like this is jimon hansu he used to do action scenes <laughs> keep that in yeah. the back of your head for later Ray Fisher also doesn't really get Yeah, this is Ray Fisher. He looks like a guy in this who might do an action scene one of these days. Is there something similar, uh, something shared between Jimin Hansu and Ray Fisher? Well, as you know, they're both in the DCEU. Yeah, that must be it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that they share that no one else in the cast shares. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so the problem with this movie is that it's like two hour two hours and 15 minutes of noise nothing is happening nothing i'm not getting to know characters the action scenes aren't even good which is like the one thing people usually say about Zack snyder movies i don't necessarily agree most of the time but even people who usually like them are like these ones aren't so hot um i really i you really feel the like shooting for the four hour edit with the action scenes i feel mm-hmm. like because they're shot and edited so weirdly that I can only imagine that he's cutting away from like the bloody part where it's he's saving for the edit, which is like, just make that movie. If that's the movie you wanted to make, just make, make that movie. No one was making you make this shorter cut this mm. time. I understand with justice league, they did make you make the shorter cut because that was almost certainly a better idea, but this is pure <laughs> self-indulgence at this point. Um, so yeah, no, it's a it's a bad movie. I didn't enjoy it at all. Um and I don't think anyone should watch it. Wow. <laughs> what about you, DJ? What did you think? I I miss Quibi so much. Oh, this would have been the best Quibi movie of all time. <laughs> it would have. Like, this then, movie was made for Quibi. For Quibi, they could just insert the other scenes in the middle and they could just say <laughs> updated Rebel Moon and you wouldn't know which it is, so you'd have to watch them all. But yeah, like Quibi five would just be somebody else's backstory we didn't see. Um, so yeah, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Because that's how this movie's made. This movie's made like it was made for Quibi. I wonder you. if he had some big deal with Quibi and then had to <laughs> retrofit it for Netflix at some point. Um, it's so bad. It's it's so bad. I, I watching this. I I can't believe this is one of the worst movies we've ever done for. No, <laughs> this is one of the most uninteresting movies we've ever done for the podcast, and it's a shame. Because, like, it is, it, it's not, like, so horrible that it's, like, laughable. It's just, like, very uninteresting. The One of the first scenes of the movie, I know we're at, not at the explainery bit. This is not a spoiler in any way. There's a character who's farming, and she's, like, throwing mm. seeds on the ground, and the seeds are in slow motion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, sets the tone for, like, no! There's like, We've come so far in the opposite direction from when we were like Zack Snyder did cool stuff in 300. And now he's like, yeah, like make the seeds slow-mo. That's probably cool. That's probably an interesting thing to watch on your TV. Um, yeah, it's like one of those YouTube channels that does normal things, but then in slow motion. And you're like, oh, yeah, popping a balloon. That is interesting in, in slow motion. Uh, they did that with this. Uh, so it's it's so bad it's 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 really sad it's Zack snyder has clearly lost his way i don't know what he needs to do probably stop making movies i like no i feel bad because that man has gone through like a lot of like personal tragedy in his life and like maybe he loves movies making movies so much but he needs to stop because he's not good at it anymore. i have to assume he loves it he keeps doing he it wants to make home movies in his backyard with his friends <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'd love that for him like he did with that Green yeah. Lantern scene from Justice League that they didn't let him put in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but people have to stop giving him millions of dollars to make movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I get that he has fans, but I don't know. They'll they'll, they'll be fine. Like I do I do want to say um, they won't be fine, first of all. They're <laughs> deeply unwell. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was actually going to say something nice. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> I couldn't help it. Um I do think there are occasional moments in this movie of something 
kind of visually or conceptually interesting where there'll be like a weird brain alien that talks through its meat puppet or like the fish alien king kind of looks neat and i'm like (laughs) that's something but the whole edifice around these interesting visual moments is so deeply boring that like it's not enough Mm. it it's so dumb too because we just had the part one part two oh amazing space epic yeah that it's like here's how you do it properly where you build the world and then you have the action play out i mean we haven't seen part two yet so maybe i'll be blown away but we didn't even build the world in this one like i don't know what the antagonist deal is i barely know what the protagonist deal is and the only reason why is because she sits down next to another character and it's like i gotta tell you my whole backstory it's very important. Well, I mean, um, Zack Snyder knows. Zack Snyder knows both of the most important rules of filmmaking. Because some people say, you show, don't tell. Obviously, he knows tell, don't show. But he also knows the <laughs> other secret rule, don't. Where you just have scenes that aren't in it. And you're like, there must have been a scene where this happened, right? And it's like, no. You figure it out in your head. We'll never know why she joined the team with her lightsabers. We'll just assume she just followed him. Because they never show us. She just had nothing better going on. Yeah. She assumed, oh, you guys are here to recruit me for Seven Samurai, right? All right, cool. I'm going to go do that with you. Like, first, check this shit out. <laughs> yeah. And that's why this would have been so good for Quibi, because you'd watch it, like, day to day and be like, oh, I must have forgotten yeah, the part where they asked her. <laughs> there. They, I had DJ like amnesia, and it just went away. Yeah. Yeah, like if this, I had to, every scene in this movie should start with one of the characters. I guess it would have to be like, I mean, it could be the Irish one going like previously on Rebel Moon. And then they'd show you like a couple of scenes and you go, I guess that is what happened on Rebel Moon last time. Uh, and then you'd fill in the blanks in your head. But they don't do that. I would have I would have so much preferred to watch this 10 minutes at a time over two weeks versus like sitting down for two plus hours mm. watching this shit. So bad. So bad. Is this the third time this year Quibi has been invoked? Either in reference to how a movie should have been presented or how it seemed like it was envisioned. Was I love doing it. Madam Web it, was Quibi. This was Quibi. Yes. And then what was the other one? Um, I can't it's because they're making movies for the TikTok generation now. Yeah, they are. What was you the know? other one? What did we do before Madam Web? Argyle. Argyle was also Quibi because the 10 minute <laughs> scenes that didn't connect in any right, meaningful way. Right. Yeah. So. Well, Nendo, what did you think of Rebel Moon? Listen, I'll say Zack Snyder. Uh, he's got a, a very passionate fan base, and they they love him for it. And he got to make this movie, got $100 million or whatever of Netflix's money, and made this movie. And I'll just say, Zack Snyder, congratulations. Zack Snyder fans, congratulations. You don't have to listen anymore, all right? So talk to you guys <laughs> later. <laughs> this movie, Rebel Moon, is missing one thing, and that's Johnny Drama. Because this is a <laughs> Star Wars movie that Vincent Chase would have been making in the Entourage verse. Like, he would play, I think, Jimon Hansu's character. But, like, that is... While I was watching that, I was like, what does this feel like I'm watching? And it's it's a movie that we get a, set, a snippet of in Entourage where, like, Vinny Chase gives a big speech about how we all have to believe in ourselves and revenge or whatever. And uh, then someone says, cut! And then we watch them walk off set and then yell about hats or something um yeah i mean this movie i didn't like it i i'm with the kids there were like little tiny things where i was like oh anthony hopkins is a robot that's kind of neat uh what was the other one the spider lady that's kind of cool oh yeah i the, remember her yeah there were bits of this movie i remember okay so I, as someone who spends way too much time on the internet i remember when the trailer for this movie came out and i think i made a video or maybe i put a tweet out that was like man this looks a lot like star wars and there were people multiple people that I assumed existed at the time, but now I'm like, maybe they were AI or something. They were like, this doesn't look like Star Wars. And at the time, I was like, that one is a lightsaber. Her name is the Scar Giver. Like, do you not hear it? It's it's Star Wars. But watching it, I'm like, oh my God, it's so much more Star Wars than I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> <laughs> they go to a cantina and the pig man hassles them. Like, what? Yeah, what are the odds? It's, because it's Zack Snyder, he hassles him <laughs> about like sex sexually, stuff. Yeah. Like sex, sex stuff and then molests him. Yep. There's there's stuff um, like that. Yeah, it's got the polite robot. <laughs> it's got so much stuff that's like right out of Star Wars that I couldn't. I genuinely, when that scene started, I was like, oh, look, they even have a cantina scene. And then that guy showed up and I was like, oh, my God, this is. 
I hope they have the rights to this guy because this might be like a Star Wars character that was drawn on a napkin in 1976 and now they're going to get sued. I think the uh, movie itself is – so it's the – here's the problem with it too because we've all said this. It's it's boring like nothing happens. Um, I had expected – Knowing that, because I knew this was a rejected Star Wars script. That was, or like a rejected Star Wars project. I don't know how far you got in the script. But like, I feel like I've heard of this project for years, but maybe it's always just been like the hypothetical. Like they should make a Star Wars movie that's just seven samurai on a planet with no lightsaber. So we already messed that part up. But the idea that this is a two-part movie and the first part is it the seven samurai part and then the second part is like them going and killing the emperor or whatever. The fact that we're going to get to the end of this and they're just going to have done the seven samurai is crazy because i the seven samurai is the easy part and like we didn't need to assemble all these guys we have so many more extra guys but also like the fact that they can't do that is uh it, it's it's very frustrating um and no, 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 DJ, yeah have you guys watched seven samurai i've seen it i've no watched it minute. like years ago when i was yeah, it's been a minute early because- 20s there are shots in this movie. It's nowhere near as much as Star Wars, but there are shots in this movie where I was like, this is just Seven Samurai. Yeah. Especially in the village. Mm-hmm. Like, there's certain shots of it where, like, the layout of it and the structures is just like, this is the Seven Samurai village. You yeah. just made it again in space. Yeah, that part of it is tricky, too, because, yeah, it's it's so derivative of Star Wars, and it's also so derivative of that, that you'd get to the end, and you're like, what was what was this and i do think like even something like jupiter ascending has more personality in a way that makes it kind of interesting watchable like nobody's at the level that eddie redmayne was at in that there's people that are trying to get there and i don't think they're like bad actors or anything but like they're just that they're just not given the space to um this movie is crying out for an eddie redmayne yeah like i yeah i mean i just and i also think it's I all I think besides all the things we've already said, it also has a really weird like message and tone and like not tone, but I guess like the themes of this movie don't quite make any sense to me in a way that I think is weird because it is so simple. You'll have a scene where a character just does a cool thing and then they say something and you're like, oh, okay, right, that's what this movie is about. And then you do that again with a different character and they say like the opposite of that, and you're like, wait, was that what the movie's about the whole time? <laughs> and like that part of it, I think felt like the easiest part to to get uh so it's weird that that's how it ends um i think the simplest answer into is the movie's not about anything yeah i mean it's about whatever Zack snyder thought was cool in the moment yeah it's it's a shame because i do think you know what it is though i think there was space for this to be cool especially in a star wars universe now this is and this is the pre-andor days i mean like i'm sure they made this around the same time as andor was made but like before andor came out there was so much room for just someone to do their own star Wars with a lot of money and make something that was cool because it was the adult one or whatever. And this movie isn't even that adult besides all the sexual violence, like we said, which they love no blood, no like cursing or anything like that. It's just very, it's it's also very tame. It's gotta be his tamest one of these. There's probably more blood in star in Batman. Well, that's because they're saving it for the R rated extended cut. Yeah. Can't wait. But also like, that's just like such a, this is my thing with Zack Snyder in general. That's like such a juvenile way for it to be a, the adult version of something. Mm-hmm. Is that, oh, there's blood and people curse and have sex. And somebody might rape you. Oh. <laughs> I love that. He loves that. It keeps um, happening. And it's like, I don't know. If you do that and also you are telling a more adult story with more sophisticated themes... That I'm like, I understand why you are being more adult about this, but ultimately, as much anytime the movie tries to say anything, it's a morality tale for children, like Star Wars. Yeah. Like, don't don't take that as a huge insult. Star Wars is a morality tale for children, but it's a it structures it really well, and so it's a lot of fun. And like, I don't know why you want to make your blood and piss curse words uh r-rated star wars but not do anything more elaborate than that especially if you're doing it based on seven samurai a movie that has some very Mm. like complex philosophical 
notions in it and some pretty deep themes. Yeah, it, it and it feels like there was a point, there was like a splintering point in 2015, or you could call it that, where we had the option of like, well, I guess you could say there was one of these between 2018 and 2019 or whatever, where like there was the Last Jedi route and the Rise of Skywalker route. But I would say you can make the same distinction between like the Solo route and the Rogue One route. So like you, they didn't really do either consistently but if they there was a lane that could have just been unexplored about like the small stories around star wars that are just some guys that i think people would have also liked um but yeah i think it's really weird how much this cribs from star wars but like not even just worse but like it's weird i guess how much this movie doesn't seem to get star wars for a movie that's like doing a lot of its things it doesn't understand like what some of these characters, why they work. Um, yeah, I, oh, and the other thing I was going to say was it feels like it's an adult movie, but like, like not besides like not being what an adult, an actual adult thing is. It's just like, it feels like this movie was made to air on network TV or something. Like, I don't (laughs) understand that part of it because besides how it's segmented into commercial breaks, which I also think could, you know, that that's part of the quibification of it, but also like, Yeah, as far as I know, and I, this is only through my, like, experience as a humble YouTuber, there does seem to be an appetite now for, like, longer stuff, and, like, I think you could have gotten away with this as Zack Snyder's four-hour movie, put it on Netflix, and it's got R-rated, and it's the big, long one. That would have been, like, the one, the definitive one, and then if you wanted to put it in theaters, maybe, because it's so graphic, uh, you could have made a PG-13 version, but, like, I just don't understand, like, the philosophy behind making two of them besides the whole option of going well you don't like that one but actually there's a secret good one that we can't show you yet but it will come out soon uh it's the real Zack snyder cut one so get ready for that one like well yeah i don't know because they know haters like us might suffer through a two hour 15 minute one but i'll be damned if i watch a four hour <laughs> version of this movie i might watch it, it the way like dj did like 10 10 I- minutes at a time over the course well, of like, like a year. That's a weird thing. About like Netflix could have made this a like miniseries, like half hour bits. Like you think they'd want to do that. Like that's their whole thing. Um, yeah. It's it's very weird. I think that we'll look back on this as part of why streaming didn't work in the eventually when it when all these streaming companies right. go belly up. But like because they couldn't figure out what to do with this, and there were so many options, but they did the middle one that doesn't make any sense. I mean I also think this wouldn't have worked as a series, but that's just because I think the hook would have been incredibly dull. Like, I feel like you would have to do a lot of stuff in the beginning to be like, don't worry, guys, there's a spider eventually. So (laughs) hold on, hold on tight. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. Um, But DJ, speaking of there's a spider eventually, do you Uh, want to tell us what happened in Rebel Moon, colon, A Child of Fire? I think this will be very easy to summarize because I think we'll go over the minutia during the wheel bits Mm -hmm. so i should feel like pretty good about this one all right so there's a farming planet and they they farm they farm so good guys they're the best farmers ever uh so good that the evil empire who's like just the empire comes and says you make crops for us now and they're basically like okay i guess we don't have a choice um they they bitch out super easy uh to some the, extent, there's a little bit of infighting that I, ends up with Ant Man like bad guy being his head smashed or whatever. Yeah, like I said, I, I got a lot of things to say about that guy, but we'll get to it. Yeah, right. There's there's a lot going on. So, um, they uh basically become like more or less uh, uh in in servitude to the uh to the empire they're gonna make great so there's a, there's a woman there who lives in secret and she used to be like the like a top like like soldier or whatever for the empire and and she's like you know this you guys are fucked and they're like no we gotta do something she's like well maybe we can make a stand if we get a, a crew together and we'll 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 fight them wow i feel like you you skipped plan. over one very important detail about her decision to make a stand what why she makes a stand because originally she does not want to make a stand yeah what's Zack snyder's favorite thing yeah 
Oh right. They, so yeah, the the bad guys leave leave a crew of uh of uh sex assault people that, yeah. that do big sex assault on uh on some lady and they're that that's her like big motivation called to adventure. Um like we'll, like we'll get to it, right? We'll we'll we get, to, get it. to it. That, but I do we'll think that is it. a pretty integral thing. Sure. Um, sure, sure, sure. Um this is why I I can't lose the the summaries cuz I'm so bad at them, you mm. know. If only if only someone else could lose. If only someone if hadn't only. demanded to pick the tiebreaker that he lost. If only yeah. someone could remember the name of the character from Gran Turismo played by uh, <laughs> Shimon Hansu. Oh, yeah. Again, not mad about the game. I'm mad. Steven Martinborough? Well, I would have taken Martinborough. I would have taken like Mr. Uh, Martinborough for that Mr. one. Mr. Martinborough. I'm, I'm going to watch Pacific Rim and I'm, I'm going to find a clip where it's like, I, hello, Riley. Yeah. Cool. It's all Idris Elba. It's gonna, there's going to be gonna a really take. bad dub of it. Made the Madam Web version <laughs> yeah. made by DJ. If <laughs> DJ's voice coming out of Idris Elba. Yeah, you're like, I don't think Idris Elba's mouth is moving, but he does keep saying, I sorry, I meant to say Riley. And I guess that's what he means. <laughs> Why did DJ leave in the parts where he says Riley and then add in a part by him correcting himself, going, yeah. wait, no, I mean Riley. He's so polite. Also, buy my gold, says Idris Elba. <laughs> I don't know what you yourself is up to today. Probably more stuff than that, but racing block still. I'll never be a, yeah, racing block in his DJ career. I like you yourself a lot. Um oh, he's the best. not being James uh, Bond, that's for sure. That's one thing he's not doing. Um So yeah, so so the woman Cora, who who used to be bad was not good, she heads out with uh the the like leader or like a farmer from the village. To go to go do seven samurai and recruit a bunch of people. Quick, DJ, give so, me a crack at that name, dude. I I, I couldn't do this. Gooner, oh, Gooner, okay. Gooner, Cora and Gooner. Right, because some of them are like like they are vaguely Nordic or something. Like they are, I guess they're kind of all over the place. But like it's the actors, Nordic pronunciation of the name we would say as Gunner. Right, and actors uh, okay. who I know don't have this accent are doing the accent. Like Corey Stahl, I'm like he's from America. I'm positive. <laughs> so this is a choice. Um, but, um yeah. so the, the their first stop is to a a, a cantina, the Star Wars cantina. They pick up Charlie Hunnam, who's a bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. Uh, no questions asked. Their next, stop, I'm well, gonna fly through these. Is he by a the bounty way. hunter? I, he says he, he is. claims he's not. I thought he was a he smuggler. Says he's just like a. He says he's oh, just a like a mercenary. Hmm. He never really says what he is actually because yeah, she's true. like, I don't like bounty hunters. And he's like, I don't either. And she's like, oh, oh you're a sure, hired okay. gun then? And he's like, mm, maybe. Yeah. Whatever. He can he can uh, never lie. He's very honorable. So he keeps <laughs> saying, I don't know, you'll find out. <laughs> so <laughs> next time on Rebel Moon. I was gonna say we're gonna I was gonna fly through these because mm-hmm. they, they matter slower, we'll get into it. So that check one, mercenary from Cantina. Check two, they're like, we need a beast tamer. Yep. So they go somewhere. <laughs> oh, and they you, you wish fu- it was that <laughs> coherent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie <laughs> Hunnam's just like, hey, we're going to that planet to get the two rebels that you know, but can we make a stop for a guy I know? Yeah, they there's just- a guy, and I, he, you'd get there and you'd be like, he can't be the guy without the shirt, right? And yeah, it's the guy without the shirt. Okay. Whatever you say. So... Uh, they 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 get him through shenanigans. The he's a slave. The owner's like, uh, if he could tame that hip, whatever. If he could tame that hippogriff, I'll release him. Mm -hmm. But if not, you're all my slaves now. And they're like, okay, we'll bet our lives on this guy who we've never met. Insane reaction from everybody (laughs) in this scene. (laughs) It makes a little bit of sense if your characters have access to the force, but it doesn't make any sense here. And like. Again, yeah, he cribbed this from that Star Wars scene that it was with Anakin and Watto and stuff, but forgot that part. Also, DJ's no. not just being cute when he calls this thing a hippogriff. This is 100% just a hippogriff yeah. from Harry Potter. It just is. This is, the, this is the pal world version of the hippogriff, where you're like, I guess they can't sue him, but they should be able to. They should get some money from these guys. It's a hippogriff. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dickens, because it just is. And, uh, and like, if you didn't know it from looking at it, you would know it from the whole like scene where you Harry rides the hippogriff, because that's what this is. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
if it was a beast that, of burden or something doing something else, I'd be like, well, it's not really that hippogriffy, but it's the same thing. It's so sad. That's what I should have done for the game. I should have said hippogriff, buckbeak, mm, Harry Potter, maybe. the Prisoner of Azkaban. I would have counted it. They're yeah, I might have accepted save. it. If you said hippogriff, I would have been like, do you remember the hippogriff's name? And then if you said the name, I'd probably give it to you. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so many opportunities that's... for you. Dr. Pam Babari or whatever his name is from the cantina yeah. scene. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. You can only oh, use the Star Wars universe once, though, so that that well would run <laughs> yeah. dry pretty quick. Um. So next stop is they go to a another planet where they get a lady who has lightsabers. Yeah. yeah. No, Do you remember her I, name? I, I don't remember her name. She has a. Na- she has uh, the only name in this I remember. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, she, um, because it, it's um Nemesis. Yeah, she's That's the right. Nemesis. Because I was like, "That's stupid." It is stupid. <laughs> She's the one from fucking Resident Evil, I guess, or something. Yeah. That's, that has Nemesis, right? Yeah. He's a big, yeah. horrible monster, but yeah. He's cool. Um, um, I Again, DJ is not exaggerating the, the lack of cohesion in going to this scene. The previous scene ends with Korra going, you got anybody else? And then we're just on this mining planet, and they're just walking with Nemesis as she goes to does her daily chores. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy it's so crazy and then i guess that nana had kind of mentioned this earlier but you know we, she does her business and then just the next scene she's there with all of them yeah i don't actually think they ask her to join i don't no. think she says another line for the rest of the movie <laughs> maybe the very end yeah i can't remember any i know uh she might have one at the very end i think you're right but <laughs> yeah, she says her little thing about revenge, and then that's it. Right. Um. So they get her. Sure, sweet. Hey, listen, then- I wouldn't have appreciated the extra scene where she has her little thing. You know, <laughs> whatever it is, I don't. I don't need it. Fine. Then they go. Oh, by the way, I think at some point here, uh, Cora explains her uh backstory to Gunner. Yeah. Uh, and it's like that she used to be a big time soldier for the empire and then not just a big not. time soldier but she was oh the daughter of the, the adopted i don't think the adopted, adopted. Daughter. yeah of yeah. the and i don't remember um, do we know what she was doing back in the day like what her job was mm. she's kind of vague. Like, i mean we know it but she has a, she had to babysit a princess leia oh she something. says she says she gives her backstory in three discrete parts and that's part oh, okay three. yeah so that's one of the later ones okay oh um, right and by the way, she's the she's the daughter, adopted daughter of the current emperor regent, not Carrie Elvis, okay, the yeah. previous emperor. Right, right and right. they didn't do this, but the beginning is all that bullshit narration from Anthony Hopkins in the space vagina scene. He goes like, "There was a king, and another king, and then the one right. was killed or something." I I also forgot to mention the Anthony Hopkins robot because it doesn't yeah. matter. It's at already all, gone. But- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It, there's no. two guys who seem like are going to join the Warriors like right off the bat, and then they leave, and they're not with them. And I'm like, I guess they're just not in the rest of the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're not. Yeah. So there's anything happens with robot. Don't worry about it. I'm sure we'll cover it in part two. But he like shoots a bad guy, even though he's not supposed to. But whatever. But we'll we'll get to it uh, in the next movie, I guess. Uh, so then they get Nemesis. So the, their crew's pretty good crew. Then they go to like a fish planet to meet with two like rebellion people who they who the Gunner sold grain to. Yeah, da- they have like a little wrong Darian one. and Devra Blood Axe. The Blood Axes, yeah. yeah. This is Ray Fisher and and someone else. Is, <laughs> someone else. Yeah. No, yeah. but what what has happened uh, between these two events, DJ? What am I missing? What fell out of my head? Well, first of all, you skipped over... Oh, I guess you very quickly said they went and got Jimin Hansu, which is about as long... Oh, I didn't. My bad. They got Jimin Hansu. Right, but I was actually talking about something else. We uh, check in with another friend it... of ours. Mm. Is it the Admiral? Yes. Is it something with the Admiral? Yeah. No, I don't remember what happens. They I... get delivered this... the bounty hunter that we see getting kidnapped right before the cantina scene. And he oh, tells them right. the information the, the our right. good guys have that the blood axes who he's been hunting are on Levitica. Right. Levitica. That's the fish planet. And yes, that we, we learned that right. 
Admiral casual, a- Admiral business casual learns that. Uh, so, right. So it's like, oh, we're going to get him. So there's the rendezvous. Um, it, it basically ends with a Ray Fisher being like, I'll join. And then he gets some of his crew to also join. And the sister's like, you piece of shit, but don't you die. But okay. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, and then everyone leaves. Uh, leaving the Empire to fuck up the planet in the mm. aftermath. Um, yeah, it is funny that Ray Fisher's guy is like, when when because he doesn't he is not convinced to go do rebel stuff by because he loves them so much he's like well if they know we're here the the empire probably right? also knows we're here so they're gonna come here and kill everybody so we should go but he doesn't seem to give the fish people a plan to deal with that either he's like you guys yeah, are all probably right? gonna get slaughtered tomorrow so like I don't know <laughs> don't bother was, doing your laundry or whatever it's fine and part of his justification for joining them is I won't let one more planet fall because of us yeah it's like it feels like yeah. you will just not that mm-hmm. one. <laughs> um so now it, this is like the big scene right so they go i forget where they go well they, they go like a port some, or something yeah charlie yeah. charlie hunnam is like i've decided i'm going to join you and i'm like you didn't already <laughs> yeah. right yeah um, it's like okay it's a but first i gotta go make a delivery because of my crime right. business Ah, mm-hmm. uh, right, and and oh, but so as it turns out, oh my God, guys, Charlie Hunnam betrays all of the good guys. Oh, yeah. Just, so, so there, I didn't really explain it, but there's these little like spider robots that like turn into like a big vertical platform and like capture you and hold you in like in a sarcophagus kind of deal. But it's like, it's like totally open, but it's like these little like claws like come around yeah, you. It's that like, thing for Melvin Rings. They look. Yeah. They look really stupid yeah honestly it was like one of the three things i liked it was like oh that's cool because then they walk you around and they go like hey look there we got him i thought yeah. that was cool and then there's like a little 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 gun with a needle you could put in the back and you could paralyze them by putting like a needle through their like spinal cord. or yeah, just or- let them go somehow <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that's true those are the two options those are the two settings when you put the gun in the back Oh, no, sorry, there's Wait. three settings. There's Yeah, there's, there's three settings, right? There's kill, and there's let go. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait, I'm wondering. Yeah, wait. was Why didn't he paralyze that other guy? But I guess he didn't want to. But it's like, who cares, I guess. I don't know. Well, hmm. so here's the weird part. Everyone is put into one of these little holders, except Gooner. Mm-hmm. He's left out because he's a shitty farmer. And Charlie Hunnam's like, Yo, you gotta kill Cora because that's your job now. Even you can't though I know you're friends with her, you were doing the accent. First of all, and, Diggins had an uh, opportunity; he didn't, and then TJ. Oh, sorry. Oh, you want me to? Didn't. You want me to? I mean, yeah. You know, the moment has passed, but maybe next time you have an option for uh, okay. right. whatever his he name is. Line. Again. Yeah. I've honestly forgotten uh, his character. Oh, Kai. His name's Kai. Kai. Yeah. That right. That's the Charlie Hunnam guy. So. uh so yeah, G- Gunnar's like, he's got the gun, he's gonna paralyze Korra, and he's like, oh no, JK, I'm gonna free her! And then he frees her, and then she, even though they're surrounded by guys, she's able to duck and roll and get a gun from somewhere and start wrecking havoc, and then no one else who's in a little claw machine it just gets shot immediately. Uh, Gunnar's able to go around and fucking free them all. And, oh, before this, sorry, right after he frees Korra, he puts the gun up to Kai's neck and just like shoots him in the in the neck. And wow. That's re- that's badass. And then a big bing of blood flies out of his head, right? Or something? No. Oh, it will in the four sense. hour cut. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Um so then he frees everyone and then there's a big fight. Uh the Admiral is defeated by Korra. Mm. Uh, hooray. Put a pin but, in that. But what else happens? Uh, yeah, do they pay a heavy price? Oh yeah, Ray Fisher dies because mm. he does take out the big ship with him, but he does die. Yeah, because that one uh, guy was driving the whole big ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was doing Cut the, the wheel around. He was piloting the ship. He was doing the guns. He was doing everything. <laughs> yeah, it's basically an autonomous ship, but there's like one guy who's kind of like monitoring it, right. and he just leaned the wrong way. Just. Ugh. Yeah, he's the human being that has to be in your self-driving Uber, otherwise it gets arrested <laughs> <Yeah>. or something. <laughs> um, 
so yeah that happens and so you know they're all like oh like i forget who says the line but it's like this proves that they are vulnerable and that we can win i think this, this is a jim and hansu line yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 he gives like a little speech yeah he's like we can do it and i'm like can you though this was like really lucky yeah like you guys were if, if they just decide to capture gunner you're all dead or whatever paralyzed whatever. and if but, they uh, only have two of these ships i guess you could get them but if they have more than that you're gonna have yeah. a lot of trouble but they're also like well now that an admiral died they're all gonna have to go back to the home world yes and so we don't have to do a seven samurai anymore guys we solved yeah. it Pro- yeah protocol dictates um so movie's wrapping up. We we go back to original farm planet and the Anthony Hopkins robot is there with like a deer antler crown mm-hmm. and just kind of staring at us. I don't know why don't know. this feels like something was left in or not added or it's very confusing. Deer antlers are badass, the, you know, I like guess. Viking stuff. The second so, character after yeah. the hippogriff to stare directly at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> So not even weird. into the camera uh, at the audience at the mm. audience uh and then the movie ends ends where the admiral's body is like brought to some place and he's filled with fluids and then has like a psychic uh conversation with the emperor and he's like you fucking dick like my daughter's out there with the bad guys fuck's wrong with you fucking get her and he's like oh, okay i will and then he's like brought back to life and then cut to credits yeah um, it's unclear but it seems like he is revealed to be at least mostly robot under there i don't yeah, know he's darth vader yeah he's darth yeah vader. yeah he already got darth vader the yeah but their technology is way better so he doesn't have to wear the big suit or anything right yeah. he's just a guy yeah he's darth vader on the inside, it also gives him right? lots of holes for yeah, exploring holes. with his mm. romantic I mean, partner I- imagine how many holes he has you just oh, like wouldn't God. be able to figure it out i'm sure someone has no, we yeah, see that true. somebody has. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's on the wheel or not, so, so I don't want to say more. I don't know. I, it might be. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you missed. I think that's basically it. It's a shit movie. <laughs> uh, is there like a guy? No, I guess not. Yeah. Because they just make the, the robot. They like open it up and it's like, this is a robot we're going to use for packing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. it. Oh, yeah, wait, don't care. What about Carrie Elwes? Oh, yeah, the part three of her backstory. Yeah, I, I can't remember. She used to be so after she did good soldier over and over again, they uh, the emperor, uh, Carrie Elwes. Um, I think they do say king, but also this is very clearly a Roman thing that yeah. they, they got going on, right. so I don't know why it's not emperor. Um, mm. uh, invites her back to the home world and is like, I want you to be my daughter's bodyguard from now on. And she's the super cool and nice princess that was going to usher in a new golden age right. of peace and harmony, right. but she was killed along with her parents. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. We'll find out. There's but, nothing in the movie yeah. to suggest that she wasn't, but just like, come on, guys, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> they're, they're still figuring it out, you know? <laughs> they hadn't written the four-hour cut yet, so they're going to figure that out soon. Um but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I can't remember if we said this. Have either of you guys seen the trailer for the new one? No. No. Me neither. I have not. I imagine this is where it gets really Seven Samurai, but I, I just wonder if, like, how much, how many things we can infer are, like, oh, they must have this scene happens in the in the next one versus, like, I guess we'll just never know. Because um, I do think there was a lot of footage. I remember from the trailer of uh, Jimin Hansu that I'm like, that couldn't have been in there. Like him doing gladiator stuff. Um, and I think we skipped it in this, but I, I imagine it's in the four hour one, which cool, you know? Yeah. I hope somebody makes a we website where they say what all this stuff was in it, and then I don't have to watch it, but yeah. I can read it and go, okay, not that. I'm glad we deliberately made a bad movie so that we could then later release a movie that we say is good now. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's the future. Um, well, uh, that is; those are the things that happen in it. But if you want more of those, we have them on the wheel. Whoa! So, are you guys ready to to hit that wheel? I'm all. Were there wheels in this movie? Woo! There must have been, right? Uh, did the farm have any wheels? No, yeah, they're probably like they... plows. 
well, they had plows. The plows didn't have wheels. They were pulled by the yeah, true. That's the like not horses they had. They must have had wheelbarrows, though. I don't know if we ever see any wheels in this movie. We mm. probably do. I just can't think of any. That's how forgettable it is. Yeah, it didn't even have any wheels. What a <laughs> what a mistake. That, What's that the was, point? Yeah, that was where it went wrong. Um, well, nowhere. It's a wheel. Mm, it's true. Good job. I, Good job. This wheel, though, we got a lot of stuff on the wheel, so I'm going to try to get through it pretty quickly. Um, I spun the wheel, landed on one of mine, space vaginas. So we talked about this a lot uh, on the last podcast, or yeah. whenever we talked about this last time. Uh, but uh, they had the space vagina. It's in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I showed it to Hannah, and she's like, that's a space vagina. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did want to point out something that I didn't notice until having seen it again. Um, do you guys remember the line that hits when the space vagina opens up that's on the, like, Cause it's, cause it's space vagina is part of the Anthony Hopkins, like, um, you know, monologue about all the Kings and stuff. Right now I was too entranced by the space vagina. I, you know, uh, my tongue rolled out of my mouth and hit the table in front of me. And I started banging on it as like my heart, like beat out of my chest. Uh, and then my face went all red and I made a steam whistle noise. Mm. Well, it's a shame cause you missed this. I mean, this is why I do subtitles personally for for movies like this, uh, and I have it open right now. The line that it happens when the space vagina opens is, "But in the royal bloodline's lust for power," and I thought that was interesting. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, I, I, wow. how'd you miss that, Zach? <laughs> and like, how do how do you know that he missed it? I mean, because he said it wasn't hey. a space vagina in those interviews, and he's oh, lying to us. You have to say it's not a space vagina when you're giving your interviews, but All deep right. down, he knows. I mean, you've got to be able to say it's a space vagina. If you're going to put a space vagina into the movie, this isn't like the JFK conspiracy or something. Just say it's a space vagina. Well, I don't you know. have to understand that he's a coward, Nando, who yeah, I guess stand so. by his space vaginas. That's true. He should have, because that was the most interesting thing in the movie, and... Uh, it happens immediately, so it's the first thing. Yeah. So if you, if you, I mean, I guess there's like one or two other things that you're like, that's kind of something, but um, yeah, it's hard to beat space vagina at being the most interesting thing in this movie. Um, but I spun the wheel again, uh, landed on one of DJ's. Uh, speaking of beginning of the movie stuff, this is the fucking for crops bit. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. Ant Man. Uh, I don't know. President Peter Russo or whatever. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know why this is in the movie, but so that we have the cool, our cool le- leader of our uh, like Nordic uh, f- farm village. Uh, like and, Vikings, uh, cool Vikings, yeah, like man. Cool Vikings. Yeah. And he has a big speech, and it's a good speech, but the speech more or less ends with, hey, Tonight is the harvest moon of whatever. So I want y'all to go back to your homes, have a lot of sex because that means we'll have a good harvest. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this is so much better than all the other traditions where you got to kill a virgin or eat a baby. Like this is the best one of those. So I'll Mm. give Zach props for this one. Tonight is the God sanctioned fuck fest. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody go in there, fill every hole. He says that, and then he grabs his wife and then, like, starts making out with her on the throne chair. And, like, we don't see the end of that scene, but I think it just becomes a big orgy in there. Because, it must. Yeah, they're all really excited. And then once her name goes up to sleep, like, we see her in her room with the old man, and she's like, I didn't even go to the orgy. But, like, it seemed like there was an orgy. And Oh, Sophia Butella, when did yeah. you get here? <laughs> she's bu- I'm busy break dancing, so I have to leave. Goodbye. Uh she loves to break dance. <laughs> you know, she's like a professional like champion break dancer. I didn't know that. Yeah. And like she's good at it. I uh She's a she's a very good physical performer, like in action right. scenes and such. And like the other what's the other one she's in? Um As for her acting. Pretty solid break dancing, though, and I cannot <laughs> deny that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That part was strange. I, I don't know why I didn't like that. It's probably because of Corey Stoll's accent, though. It was distracting. Also, later it's implied that between leaving the orgy and going to uh, going to bed, she did have sex with her like boy toy. Oh, I thought that was somebody else. Had He had sex with somebody else and not her. Oh, maybe. That was how I read that. But also, it was not clear. 
it wasn't yeah. clear to me because she didn't seem but i guess she has repeatedly been like i'm not really that interested in him so if she's well, yeah. not upset about him having sex with someone else and that's the other thing it doesn't matter because she doesn't have any romantic anything with any of these people there's like a s- tiny hint of chemistry with charlie hunnam but that doesn't really go anywhere <laughs> I mean, they they try to make chemistry happen between the two of them. I don't. I wouldn't say it's successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she has a whole thing that she says to the old man in this scene, where she's like, "Ma, the way I was raised, they beat all of the all of the love and kindness out of me. My life yeah. has been so hard that I can never love again. Ah, oh, it is so horrible and bad." And then every story she tells from that point on about her past involves her forming a deep emotional attachment to somebody. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not disputing that your past is traumatic and that you have, you know, things you need to work through, but it really feels like you are capable of forming attachments with other people because you did it constantly. Mm hmm. You had like a work husband or whatever we're calling her like army like lover yeah conscripted like you have to have a boyfriend in the army which i understand why that actually i mean it doesn't make any sense but like the the explanation they give in that is like they wanted us to care about something to distract us from the war and all our crimes and whatever but um then her guy dies and that like fucks up everything and i'm like yeah most of these guys would die it feels like we're creating an army of traumatic events just waiting to happen i don't know why they did this like this weird. is based on a i don't like i don't know if it's a true thing or not but this is a thing people would say about i don't know i don't remember if it's roman or greek soldiers mm. that they were encouraged to kind of frat fraternize so that they would have that sort of personal care for their fellow soldier but the soldiers in the greek and roman army were all men well, Nando, back then we had a very different attitude to that sort of thing. Hey. That one bit. Um, hey. <laughs> this is a very, uh, I don't want to say like heterosexual movie because it's barely that. But um, I'm surprised that there was not a little bit of, because I feel like Sofia Batella in a lot of the movies she's in has some bits where she flirts with a lady. Like that's the, uh, what's the one, Atomic Blonde? Remember that? Yeah. You yeah, know, you that, got a little bit of I that. wouldn't call what they do simply well, flirting. Yeah, you got a ton of where they fully go for it. And then you have the Argyle movie where there is like a little hint of that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she is kind of good at that. Like, I don't know who she could have. Maybe the Spider Woman. But um, not, I'm surprised uh, also, there's not a little bit of that. Uh, another thing I had in the chamber, Delphine from Atomic Blonde. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good one. Good one. Yeah, I um, I couldn't couldn't tell you your name or her name. In a million years in that movie. Actually, it was Delphine. Oh. Delphine. Ooh. Now we're going to cut. I mean, Everybody's going to show up next week with all the edits. We're just going to have like, <laughs> yeah, deep fakes where, or like edits where someone gets on a loudspeaker and goes, is Delphine here? Delphine. The Delphine. person is that, are you at the club where everyone's shooting each other? Oh, yes, there you are shooting right now with the, with the bangs. It's you. Uh, I would never miss you. I'm the person who we have to listen to the most because I have your birth certificate. So everyone listen to me. And I guess that's the principle of the club or something. Um, <laughs> how do you spell her name, Sophia Pichardo? So I was curious about this. So she I, I've, she is um, 41 years old, which I'm, I'm shocked. Wow. I know I'm always older she's than great. these people. Yeah, it's like. I mean, being a really, really amazing break dancer will do that to you, I guess. You mean you're always younger than these people? I'm always older than these people. Like, you see, like, well, Brie Larson, and you're like, what is she, like, 40? Oh. Nope, she's 33. Okay, well, fuck me then, I guess. Like, my, you know, I'm older than Captain Marvel. The, you know, you life is not be. worth living. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we still got Sophia Patel every so often to go, nope, she's older. That's nice. Um, Good for her. Uh, yeah. Um, I was kind of curious about this, about like her, her father, let's say, is Safi Butella, uh, is a composer and jazz musician. Oh. So that's why she dances and it's, it's got an interesting so life. She's a Nepo baby. A, dan- a, a breakdancing Nepo baby. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really funny if like you were a breakdancing Nepo baby and just got out there to like bad breakdancing and everybody pretended it was good. 
there's only a few jobs you can nepo baby in and acting is one of them um what else is weird about fucking for crops that was it i just thought it was interesting Uh, honestly honestly the way the movie opened i had hope because like this scene was fun and then even like the first empire interrogation scene is like not too bad but then it goes like downhill so fast Susie at the cantina, but I had like a teeny bit of hope at the start of this movie. So you like Corey Stoll. You were like excited for him. You know what? I do like Corey Stoll. You were like, I'm excited for this movie to feature large amounts of Corey Stoll. Yeah. 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 And I, Ray I'm Fisher. A, the two I'm a stars I'm here for. <laughs> I'm a Stoll stan. There's a mm. few of us, but you know, we're there. And of course, for the game, I would have had Corey Stoll. Well, I couldn't have used Yellow Jacket. but No, you, you know. could not. Do you remember sure his name in that movies. movie? Oh, Darian Cross, of course. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're just adding well, extra letters to these as a joke, I see. Incorrect. <laughs> yeah, he's the one person on Earth named Darian. He's invented. I mean, I guess in comic books, that wouldn't be insane, but. Um, right, Darren. right. Is it Darren? Oh, my God. Do you remember I his name like in this? In, no, For later. You know, you might need this in, next time we do a Corey Stoll movie. Uh, Sindri. Oh his name yeah, is Sindri. but he is—he does call himself the father of this group. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Which is kind of cool. You know what? Even or if you didn't know during his... the orgy, he calls himself Daddy. He does yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> if you didn't know uh, his name from um, uh, the Ant Man movies, I would have also taken Modok actually, Ooh, um, yeah. because he does say, "I'm not that anymore. My name is Modok now." And uh, who am I to say he's not Modok? Um, <laughs> no one that's it i do like him i kind of wish he was in more of it i guess maybe i don't know i think he's a fun guy he's it's kind of cool guy. he's got a little hat i like this little hat um i love but the yeah. effect of stretching cory stall's face across the square Ugh. that looked so good mm. <laughs> anyway uh yeah i don't know it's it's weird um but uh, I spun the wheel again. Land that one of Diggins is accidentally assigned to the evil sexual violence brigade. <laughs> Talk about that character. We haven't really brought him up yet, or whatever. I he couldn't really. Does, he disappears after this. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what happened to him. I kind of assumed he died, but you're right. He doesn't die. He survives that scene. Yeah. Uh, I also want to bring up real quick because this kind of happens in between these two wheel slices that Corey Stahl's negotiation tactic that gets him killed is like incredibly stupid and not what he said he would do yeah because based on cora's advice she's like you know give them whatever they want but don't volunteer anything yep and instead the admiral comes in and is like ah yes well we could use some grain our incredibly advanced hyper speed (laughs) ships and everything can't get some cereal so we need some food from you guys uh, we'll buy whatever your surplus is, three times market price for the trouble. Yep. Um, and Corey Stahl is like, we don't got anything. I'm like, that's <laughs> not, don't volunteer how much you have, but I don't think that means outright refuse to give him anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty bad idea. That's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's weird too, because we learned that, um... Michael Heisman's character has been selling their surplus to like other people or something. To so the like, rebels. yeah, nobody's. It's not surplus. Like we're not keeping it. It's just getting sold to other guys. I guess it's more than we need. I guess I, I don't know. What yeah, I think because well, there's only so much you can keep. It's going to go bad eventually. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, um, but anyway, so this is there's a. There, it does not get mentioned in DJ summary at all. I don't blame him because the guy doesn't matter. Um. There is one member of the like garrison they leave behind to make sure that the, the harvest happens. Who? Well, first of all, there's every other member who is comically evil. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the most like beats people up because they think it's fun. Like starts shooting Anthony Hopkins robot just because he can. He's like, a yeah. fucking robot. He's a shit kicker fucking robot. Yeah. He's a matter? robot and he won't fight back if I shoot him. So I'm just going to shoot him because I think it's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like 
they're just the most like going up to the villagers like i own you <laughs> you gotta do everything i say yeah mm, i'm gonna <laughs> rape all your women they do you say that pretty much <laughs> they do basically say that and then they follow through on that threat yep. in the first of this movie's <laughs> sexual violence threats mm-hmm. which to be fair to this movie there's only two that i counted yeah i was expecting more as well but i guess like there's just always so many you can do. Yeah, we'll see script. what happens in part two. I was thinking about this. How many times does this happen in Zack Snyder movies? Can we go through a list of them? It's oh a bunch, boy. right? I'm like sure. 300 has this, mm-hmm. I think. I can't remember. Yeah. The, the exactly. evil senator blackmails his wife. In yes. Sure. Okay. That that feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the owl movie and then the one with the... the <laughs> Can you imagine the one with the movie? girls in the prison or mental institution that or whatever was, that is. It's like just, just that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the oh, movie's exclusively that. This is the other one I couldn't remember. Uh, Army of the Dead. Does that have any of that in it? I kind of remember a corrupt like border patrol agent or something getting at yeah. somebody, but I can't remember if it was this or just like extorting her for money. Um I think there was some implication that he does it to some people. Mm -hmm. who are in like the refugee camp that he extorts them for sexual favors fascinating yeah (laughs) um anyway uh but there's this one wide-eyed kid who is like not evil and so whenever they start being evil he's like stop that it's bad to be evil Including he's the first one to try to stop them from the sexual violence brigade. Mm-hmm. Um, when they're start, when they're literally dragging off a woman, and then their commanding officer comes in and is like, "Oh, gentlemen, I am appalled at this behavior that you would dare threaten this poor young woman without letting me get a taste yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so it dumb. Sucks. It's bad." <laughs> But yeah, you think like, okay, so he's the first warrior, right? Because he's the one who accidentally got assigned to the most evil brigade. Right. But I literally don't think he shows up again after the scene where they kill all of the other soldiers. He's there. He's alive. And then he just isn't in any other scene. (laughs) Yeah, I don't I don't think we see him again either. I'm trying to remember what actually because at the end. They just go back to the village and see the robot, but they don't like go back home. So it can't be. Yeah, it would have to have been in that scene and it's not. So. Yeah, they missed out. I could have had that guy. That would have been cool. I mean, he's not. I He doesn't seem to have any special skills. He's just some random soldier. But like, I don't know. I feel like every little bit helps. Uh, in a seven samurai situation oh yeah yeah it, you're yes ending all the way to the bank right like yeah what's extra funny is i'm looking at this this uh image uh from the end of the movie of all of them riding back to the village and there's six of them <laughs> it's like they're missing one you know well the one did die well right but then yeah you have this other guy so it's like oh we had eight and then uh, they do have seven but it's him but uh but also they have the robot well, they don't have the rope. The robot isn't riding with them. He's not part of it. the six that make it. Spoilers for people is um, Tarzan, uh, Gazelle, one of the Dario's, Wizard Shazam, the Jedi, and then like the crew member of the Blood Axis guy. Yeah. Oh, so right. she's like I'll taking make sure you his don't place, die. but. Yeah. I don't know if she's going to be like a main character going forward or she is just the sixth one. She's his replacement. I, I mean, right? you have to. Yeah. It seems like really... what we liked about him was that he had a big army and was sick, but I guess yeah. she's in charge of the army now too. I don't know. It's incredible that he, Ray Fisher in this movie barely has any personality traits. Most like, it's just like all the characters. <laughs> and then we replace him with someone who had even less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I crushed it. Yeah, the sexual violence brigade was bad. That part of the movie was bad. Because you know why it's bad? Besides all the other reasons, if they just wanted to kill her for some reason, that would be acceptable, you know, as like a reason why she turns and rebels. So they wanted to kill the little girl because she spilled water on their feet or something. Yeah, she was insolent. They were 
they were like, you were insufficiently deferential. It is time for you to die. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be sexual. And it being sexual adds nothing to what's happening. Yeah. Makes it just a little bit more upsetting. Um, yeah. But that's what they love. And you know what? Yeah, this girl forms a little bond with the robot. Have it be the robot or something that like is they're kicking it again. And then she's like, stop. And then they almost execute her or something. I don't know. But. Yeah, he's like he's kind of like you're the princess that we talked about before, and you're like, is she? Because she lives in this hmm. village where Sophia Batella ended up, and also is he, and seems to be close to her, and we don't know exactly what happened with Sophia Batella and how she came to be here. So yeah, guys, this she's the princess. <laughs> I, cr- I just cracked the case. Incredible. You're so good. You're so smart and wise. All I had to do was think about it more than not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm i going to spin the wheel again because there's other stuff on the wheel. Um, this one landed on one of Diggins is also. Uh, this one says, top of the morning. Me name is San Holo. <laughs> <laughs> so we got... After they after they leave that, they go to this guy in the little cantina scene. The hell was going on here? What was this? This man's not Irish, right? <laughs> he's British, Hunt? I think. Yeah, uh, I think he's, yeah, he's British. He's I'm British. pretty sure I've seen interviews with him too. I believe he is not Irish. Yeah, uh, I mean, if Joey he is, is that an is English some English actor. Those those Irish people got to get to him. And like teach him what it sounds like because he forgot. He's been gone for so long. You made a big mistake coming over to Dublin, boy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We heard you in that rebel moon. What do you mean? It's me, Charlie Hunnam, an Irish man. Well, no, he said that, but it's an Irish man because every sentence he says ends like this because he's bad at it. But also, um, what does this movie have against Irish people? (laughs) <laughs> For all the Nordic stuff it loves, besides him being the secret baggie with the Irish accent, I want to say the end bad guy also has an Irish accent. Yeah, I think Belisarius, her adopted dad, seems to have an Irish accent. And the main bad guy, who is not Irish, has a shillelagh as, like, his main weapon for some reason. <laughs> they all do. All the they main all, guys yeah. have Right, one. yeah. Yes, so we see him weird. use this a lot. But, yeah, like... Is this space Ireland versus space Norway or something? Or like space Iceland, I guess, or whatever. But like, I mean, there was a conflict between uh, the Irish and the Norwegians, but the Norwegians were the invaders in that one. Mm. It also was a very long time ago. Just feels like a really strange choice. Mm. Mm. Like, does he, he's, he's like, he's British. He's not from Ireland. He's he's English specifically. Hmm. Has he ever done an accent besides American? I was going to say, he's done American accents. Yeah. I wonder if this is a guy, he's always been trying accents, and he was like, you know what, fuck it, let's try it on Rebel Moon. What's what's going to happen? It's been working. Am going to get fired from Rebel Moon? No. <laughs> oh, no. How yeah. awful for my career. <laughs> like, in his Pacific Rim, he's American, right? It's like, he's yeah. got that accent. Yep. And then um, the King Arthur movie, I assume he's British. The Gentleman movie is British. Yeah, he's mostly, mostly British or American. He was in a Star Wars, too. I didn't know that. Eh. Or was he? Was he? I'm not seeing it on this. Yeah, that's weird. That his, looking at. his IMDb seemed to suggest that he was. Independent movie self is on Oh, audition for it. Okay. He auditioned for Attack of the Clones. Oh, maybe he was going to be Anakin like Hayden Christensen. Mm, maybe. I could see what it. What a different world that would be. D- yeah. D- didn't work out. Ugh. I kind of like Charlie Hunnam, like as much as you can like an actor who's like in a movie like this and you know not very good but like interviews i've seen he seems cool yeah he's fine i have nothing against him other than his irish accent yeah well he oh he auditioned for the role of thor he could have been thor i could see it that could have been cool he's white and blonde yeah exactly those are the Uh, criteria what was the other thing i said that was interesting oh he was cast as christian gray in 50 shades of gray but three weeks oh. before the start of the shooting, he chose to drop out of the film uh, due to personal reasons and his busy schedule with Sons of Anarchy. Do you think the personal reasons were he read the script? Maybe. Well, I don't know. I would that. 
And it's, maybe he stopped doing that after that because he's like, man, I missed out on a lot of money. I'll never read a script true. again as long as I live. But uh, <laughs> that's how we ended up here. Yeah, I don't know. Sons of Anarchy is supposed to be pretty good. I've never seen it. Um, I, but, I remember people speaking fondly of it when it was airing. Yeah. Yeah, that accent, man. Weird. But yeah, also just like it's it's kind of weird. It's like a lot of this movie where it's not like he's doing exactly the Han Solo entrance mm-hmm. thing because he he shoots the uh, the the, the pig man who tried to buy uh, Gooner. Yeah, yeah, to have for, sex with. To have, mm-hmm. to, he's very clear about how he's going to have sex with Gooner. Um, because when the pig man's about to kill Sophia Batella and like, why? Hey man, pig man's got to have Shex too. I, I don't see what the issue is. No, not that part. Why does he save Sophia Batella? I know. Oh. I guess he kind of says later, it's like, I was trying to, I wanted to use your story to gather all the warriors yeah. so I could oh. sell you to the Empire oh. all at once. Yeah, he, he had to collect the set, right? Like, I once mean, I heard you, you were going to go after all these people, it's like, oh, this is the biggest payday score for I'm me ever. I'm pretty sure he does this before he knows that. Yeah, I'm, what I'm curious on is when, wait, what did he think he was doing? Because I don't think he knows. He's not like, her being like the super badass like ultra army person many characters meet her and don't recognize her right like she's not yeah and he's well, not working like he's not like the empire he just is a smuggler or whatever who like works with them so he probably doesn't know that the look is so different too like yeah. the flashbacks they showed to her in like the army versus her look now are totally different it's actually conceivable that you'd be like oh yeah those are two different people mm-hmm but so, she um i want to say she did she tell him her backstory at one point? I think he's one of the exposition dumps. No, I think all the exposition dumps are to Gooner. Hmm. That would make sense. I couldn't tell if they were just all hearing it at once. When Maybe, when he has the know. scene where he's like, I guess I'm a good guy now. Is that what's happening in that scene? You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about, but no, the, he's just like, I've decided to move. I'm a good boy now. Yeah. I'm going to do a good boy things and help you out. But first, I gotta go do the rest of me crime. <laughs> I guess that's right. Yeah. I guess the most generous explanation you could say, like, maybe it's his ship, right? So, oh, no, it's not his ship. It you is put, like, his a little. Ship. Yeah, it's is his, it ship. his ship. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, just. They're oh, like, right. they need a ship. And he's like, I've got a ship. Right. And that's how he gets them. So then, I guess I'm thinking, like, maybe he just listened to their conversations on the ship and figured it out maybe i mean i think there's a w- later wheel slice that would be better for this but i feel like there's a really huge missed opportunity with the mm-hmm. reveal later that i can't believe they didn't do well well yeah we will get to that then but first you have to get to like a bunch of other things like for instance one of dj's uh now this is griffin riding Talk about that guy they recruit. So the 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 next person they recruit uh, after San Holo is um, I do you guys remember his name? Tarek. Yeah, sure. something like that. So they go to right. Set in the recap, they just like we gotta go pick up a guy is what San Holo says, and then they just show up here. Like yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no effort or like. Yeah, there's no effort needed to get anywhere. They're just like, we got to go here. And then they're there. And yeah. because reasons. Uh, and maybe maybe because San Holo knew he wanted to collect the set, but I, that's not made explicitly clear. No, um, this is this is him saying, I know a guy. So this is definitely San Holo's uh, bag. But and it, it's him like trying to collect his set. Like, I, I wasn't sure when that became part of the plan. I think it was the pit. Like as soon as he heard her full story, he was like, "Oh, we can get all of these guys because right, they right, would right. come help. They would do a seven samurai." I just, yeah. I, I literally don't remember when that happened. Oh, I don't know. Or oh, happened. well, he doesn't say that until the end. No, yeah. I mean when she tells him the backstory. Oh well, the backstory. They, she tells him that they're about they're going to take on the empire because the village is threatened after he saves her. 
Right. Okay. The rest of the backstory doesn't matter. Right. Okay. So him so, deciding to do this. You right. could so say, like, okay, so you could say he learns if, if the bad guy, secret bad guy, is listening in on their conversations after they go to Nemesis on that next plane ride, she tells him about the daughter, which would be enough to identify her as like the person that she's pretending to be. Right. But he's already decided I'm going to capture a bunch of people delivered to the Empire. I guess so. Yes. Sure. So they go to this guy and he is a whatever indentured servant on a ranch and there's like a griffin and they decide as part of the team. The team's logic is, oh, I guess a beast tamer would be good because reasons. So the guy has a griffin. I don't think any of them, including Zack Snyder, are thinking more deeply than you look cool. Get in. (laughs) Yeah, you're strong. (laughs) And it's so, weird because they give a reason later when Charlie Hunnam's like kind of IDing everybody at the end. He's like, and you're a prince, whatever. And it's like, oh, oh is that sure. why you wanted him? Because he's a charge of an army or something? But we never hear about that outside of that line. So this guy owns a a, a hippogriff, right? Essentially. Mm-hmm. And I I guess he needs it like tamed. Yeah. So yeah, like, like a horse. You need it broken in. <laughs> sure. And they're like, we want this guy to come with us. And he's like, well, I own him, but I need that tame. So if he could do it, then I'll let him go because I'll have a tame griffin. But if he can't, then you're all my slaves. And they agree for no discussion (laughs) at all. They're just, she's just like, hey, you think you can do it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. She asks him and he's like, yes, I can. Will beast comes slaves. But unless they are like not going to agree to it, he's, he's like, "Ah, oh, you're my slaves sense. now." But uh, whatever. But he's like, "Ah, oh, you're my you. You work for me now." They're like, "No, we don't. We yeah. all have guns. We're gonna just leave." We, I mean, probably right. that's that probably what they was do. the plan. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't imagine what's his name would be like. All right, cards on the table. I work for the Empire. Uh, they're coming to kill you, so <laughs> let us go. I mean, the crazy <laughs> thing is when he succeeds, the the guy is like, "Oh well, deal's a deal." And yeah, just lets him go. That's the part where I'm like, that's not who this character is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so this is like ripped from the the pod racing scene from Star Wars, right? You know, you be my slave, or you, you get him. You know, the whole thing with Watto. So mm-hmm. he tames the Griffin, no problem. He just like looks at it in a different language, says, "I know your pain, so you love me." Mm-hmm. Um, and then Look it works. Big muscles. And he's got very big muscles, no shirt. And then to dig at his point, the guy's like, okay, fair's fair. Well, Go take well, him. He does fully calm it and tame it with words. And then also they have a a wild flying scene oh, where yes. he has to tame it. Even though it doesn't make sense to do both of those. Right. Yeah. But they wanted to do the thing from Harry Potter, so he, he gets to ride it. Um, because this movie's also a little bit of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if for just this one part. So he, he rides it, then it's all good. And, and then, so they have the guy now, but then the last thing we see is like the, the guy who just lost his indentured servant, but now has a tamed hippogriff is like, yeah, I got a hippogriff. And then it fucking kills him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was just like, I don't know. I mean, he was keeping debt slaves. Uh, so he probably wasn't a good guy, but like everything we see of him in this movie is honestly insanely reasonable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So this doesn't feel earned. It doesn't no. feel deserved. I, I didn't feel good that that guy died. I mean, he was wearing a crappy like mesh shirt and like yeah. looks like a weirdo. But like, I'm not happy he died. <laughs> and also, that hippogriff's not tamed unless it's so tamed that it could s- see evil and kill it. Right? Yeah. What does tamed even mean? Is like you can ride it, but like I would assume it. Not everybody just can. Like, but. I guess that's how these, it up and see what happens. I don't yeah, know. that's how these guys would work. Um, I don't know what like I don't know what this guy's gonna do with the hippogriff either. Is he just gonna ride it around? Well, nothing. Now he's dead. Yeah. So I guess it's totally free. Get murdered. By one. I was kind of expecting, and it would have been really funny if Tarek, after they get going, was like, "No, you go, you go fast. I didn't tame it at all. Let's go, let's go, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. How would the guy have known? Like, he might have just been calm for a second, but, you know, could have went way bad. <laughs> it's so stupid. That would have been cool. This movie had an option to be cool. It did. Maybe it did. in the four-hour version. <laughs> Maybe in the four-hour version he says that. Yeah. We'll find out. Uh, 
But speaking of things that should have been in the four hour version, I spun wheel one at Diggins is don't interrupt me while I'm fucking my squid. Remember that? <laughs> That's weird, right? Yeah. So in in one of the Darth Vader scenes for the Admiral, uh, Atticus Noble, uh, where he's like connecting wires to his many holes. <laughs> um there's another point where like my second in command comes in and it's like, Admiral, we found new intel or whatever. I don't even remember. Oh, no, he's there's a saying like we found someone who knows where the blood axes are. Yeah. And we're bringing them here. And he's like, cool. And as he's saying that, he fully disrobes, gets naked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then backs into, we don't see the full thing, but it's some kind of creature that has like waving black tentacles that start caressing his naked body and like putting tentacles into his holes and he even i think he even does like a when Mm. one of the when one of the tentacles goes into one of his holes um in front of his subordinate yeah (laughs) yeah he's even offer any any of his holes to the subordinate (laughs) either it's very rude or any tentacles or a tentacle yeah exactly uh and it's like i don't know i mean that was kind of interesting to watch this man fuck a squid but mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you doing this here and now? I don't know. There's, this is this is a sexual harassment lawsuit waiting <sighs> to happen. I mean, for a movie with a space vagina, it, this movie does have a really weird attitude towards sex. Now that I think about it, because you do get like the Sindri who's like, everyone have sex. So we'll have cool crops and uh, <laughs> I'm going to have sex right now. And it's what we Nordic people do. And then you get this guy who's like a weirdo doing weird tentacle sex. But, like, it's not any, like, if the good guy was doing it, I would be like, yeah, it's it's fun for this movie. But I do think just based on the laws of movie, this is kind of supposed to be some sort of moral thing of, like, this is the right way to have sex for crops. And this is the wrong way to have sex. Right. Having sex with a squid, putting its tentacles into your many holes. Yeah. Is a a sign of moral degeneracy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And, uh. You know, I'll give Zack Snyder a lot of things, but I just I won't give him that tentacles and but stuff. I won't he's, do that. Yeah, I won't, gotta I won't give ease you up on that. Um, I, I will say, you know, Zack Snyder at least has the dignity to make his fetishes slightly less obvious than Quentin Tarantino. Mm, yeah. I mean, I mean, sure. Yeah. Zack Snyder movies also do have a lot of hunky guys in them now that I'm thinking about it. Like, it does feel like the guy who tamed the hippogriff might just be a 300 guy who they brought over from 300. And it's like... It would be like 20, it's like 20 years ago. I know. But he's like, I love it when the movies have this in them. Let's do this. And you know what? Good for him. I'm glad he's raising the next generation of Michael Fassbenders. I hope. Someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Michael Fassbender's not getting any younger. Um... I spent the wheel again. This guy was in Game of Thrones, also. Yeah, he was the lead Dothraki from later in the in the series. Okay. He didn't have much to do, but you could see him. I look. I tried to like be like, could I have noticed him? But you never would have because he's got all the Dothraki stuff on. Like you, you'd never make the connection. Mm-hmm. It's right. also apparently in the Supergirl show, but this is probably long after I stopped watching. Um, wait, or was it? Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. He's not the character I thought he was. Okay. Um, he seems like he's like a main character though. William Day. It's not the Calendar Man, is it? No, I don't know who this guy's supposed to be. We, we I don't know, calendar Supergirl. Whatever. Uh, it's probably pretty cool. Um, speaking of things that are pretty cool, I spun the wheel again, land on one of mine. So this is a line from the Spider scene that I thought was really weird. This is the line that what's her name says to them as they so she kills the Spider Lady. Then Nemesis kills the spider lady. And then she says, they're like, cool that you killed the spider lady. And she says, this could be any of you dying in the name of revenge. You do well to remember that. And I'm like, I don't think that's why you killed the spider lady. I think you killed the spider lady because it stole a child. I don't think they're going to do that. But I, this well, is but part she, of. She does have the whole thing before where the spider lady is like, I'm kidnapping children because all the miners came here and made the air here poisonous and all my kids died. Yeah. So I want to do the same thing. And she's like, that's not justice. It's revenge. 
So I guess that's what she's saying. It's mm. like you get all mixed up in your mad quest for revenge and end up going too far and someone has to kill you. And I'm like, that's a, that's a point for a movie like this to make. Cool. <laughs> and then we continue to other guys and they're like, I really want to get revenge. And our main characters are like, good. That's what we all should want. Revenge is it's good. Not, yeah. the end. It's, it's not even that internally consistent because they go to Jimin Hansu and Jimin Hansu is like, oh, I'm so sad that all my guys died. I can't do anything. I can't be cool. And she's like, what about redemption? And he's like, no, I'm too sad for redemption. And then Sophia Batella herself yeah. brings up the concept of what if you got some sick ass revenge though? <laughs> like, sick ass revenge you say oh that's my favorite yeah i do want to ask I'm a question bored. did you hansu's guy was like where was he when we met him he was on pollux the coliseum planet and he was like a prisoner right he was kind chained of up. or something yeah i don't think so he was just like drunk in an alley he was chained up, though, wasn't so, he? So, yeah, I remember when they meet him, it seems like he's drunk in an alley. But then when they get him, it does seem like he's, like, locked up on some, like, rock thing. I couldn't figure this out. Um, well, they just they just paid for him to get a little bath. Uh, I'm going to have to, like, go on Netflix and, like, scroll. I could have sworn he was, like, chained to a rock and they go, General Titus. You know, no, you're right. You he is just getting him? a bath. The thing that uh, I thought was a chain is the the hose that they're the garden hose that they're using to bathe him i it's say it's space and we have garden hoses yeah right? mm-hmm. not, for our gardens. not for, yeah i guess Nothing my thing a little with, more futuristic my thing with him is like charlie hunnam brings this up when he's going through everybody why they're all valuable to the empire and i understand like maybe not everybody knows where you know, like the the prince, they don't know he's the prince and they don't know he's an indentured servant on the bird planet. With this guy, it seems like anybody would know he's here. Right? He seems very famous. Yeah, but also the, when he describes everybody he's got, he's like, and General Titus, everyone's favorite guy, the coolest guy ever who uh, they'll be so psyched to get you. And it's like, then why didn't they? What was stopping them from getting him specifically? <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, like the nemesis. Also, it's like everybody knows who she is. I, she'd be a little tougher to bring down, but like, it, it really seemed to want them. I don't understand. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they are on like the edge of the. It's supposed to be like the mm. outer rim in Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, where it's like the Empire doesn't have big good control here, and they're only there because they're hunting for the blood axes. Hmm. I don't That's know, true. It is, it is silly. Um, oh, yeah. I spun the wheel again. Land on when it digging is what FanDuel does to a motherfucker. Let's talk about <laughs> that. Oh, well, this is about the the betting. Yeah. Uh, he just immediately proposes an insane oh. bet. And everyone else is like, yeah, 100 percent. Mm. Uh, so we kind of already talked about it. OK. What did For you some think reason- that meant? I thought you meant like surrendering your troops as like fan duel. I don't know. I thought that was what happened to Jimin Hansu in your head or something. Oh, there was no, going to be no. some relationship because he's the guy that's like, oh, because that, that is what fan duel does to a motherfucker is you're lying on the streets. Yeah. Just I wishing mean, for a bath yeah. from a nice garden hose. That is what will happen to all of the people who get addicted to fan duel is they'll end up destitute, drunk on the street, praying for the sweet release of death. Except for you, listener. You've got a system. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, it's going to be fine for you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, oh, I spent the wheel again. Land on one of mine. This was weird. And it's just the line that I didn't like. Uh, remember, and I guess this is like advice to anybody. If you are going to get released by a guy that has you prisoner and he's like, just do this one thing for me and then I'll release you. Get it in writing or be really clear about what it is. <laughs> or yeah, like be, But when you say I go free, I'll be alive also, right? Yeah, I get to leave here with my body leaving and not dead. Because every single fucking time, just let him go. Who cares? I mean, why do you care? It's not like you're secretly trying to find these people. You're going to show up and shoot them all. Whatever. I don't know. 
It was weird. Well, because how else will the audience know how evil I am? Right. If I don't kill him. Have the bird kill him afterwards. That's how we actually know people are evil or not. Because that guy was honorable <laughs> with his weird little thing deal. So. But then the bird killed him and that means he was evil. The bird did kill him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That part was dumb. I did think that little spider thing was cool, but it's pretty stupid. The the spider like. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the chair of death thing. Not the spider. I thought the spider lady was cool, too. She was. If I cool. could give one note, more spiders. Yeah. Um, speaking of the spider lady, if we don't have anything else on the wheel about her, I did want to bring up one thing. Well, I do think there is something on the wheel. It's when a DJ slices. It says stick wars. Assume this is her, right? Or no? Are we talking about something else? I had. So, no, mine was uh, about the Admiral. That was Stick Vader. Was oh, Stick, stick Vader. Wars? I thought you were going to talk I about. I was confused. Things. I thought you were going to talk about how the lightsabers are lightsabers, but they're sticks. Um, I mean, we'll get I to Stick talk Vader about it later. It is insane. It is insane. Um, so, yeah. So, Diggins, make your spider point, and then I'll make a stick point because I would like to make this point. So, so Nemesis comes in. They're like talking to her, and she's like, hold on. Uh, and she goes and fights Jenna Malone, the spider lady. Um, and the spider lady has a kidnapped child whom she hasn't <laughs> killed yet for some reason. She's really, holding her like a little baby. Right. But like the whole, she's like saying out loud, I kidnapped these children to kill them. And I'm like, why haven't you? Yeah. I don't want the child to be dead, but it seems silly that you're just holding her. Mm hmm. Um, but so they get into a big sick fight uh, and the child gets like tossed aside and is in danger in the fight. And it's like none of these other people who are there are shots where we see them just standing in the yeah. door frame do anything to help her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's crazy. Except for Gooner, the one person who can't do anything is like <laughs> goes over to the kid and is like, hey, kid, let's try to get out of the way of this sick ass fight. Well, yeah, and, and maybe not like, all the adults, but not even the kid leaves. The kid's like, I said I'd stay here and get killed by the spider, so I'm not going to go anywhere. <laughs> but promises, what, promises. What really yeah. drives me crazy is later, before uh, getting into her backstory again, Cora is like, that was really brave of you, Gunner, <laughs> to try to save that girl. And I'm like, you were also there, Cora. Why didn't you do anything? Yeah, Cora, you have a gun. <laughs> You're like one of the super special, most badass soldiers ever. And you were like, I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah. Especially since her one character trait was like, doesn't like when bad things happen to little girls. So it feels like this is a no brainer for you, Cora. It's not like they tried to come in and Nemesis was like, no, I must do this alone. Yeah, It feels like they are just treating it like an audition where they're like, well, let's see if she's cool enough to join us. See how this plays out. Maybe there is a like a big negotiation scene before this. They go in the elevator down to the spider lady like town. Uh, but that's going to be in the four hour one because there's lots of sex happening in the background or something like that. So we couldn't have it in here. <laughs> what if that much, was what the, the extra two hours are just more exposition, but with naked characters being fonded by tentacles, but you can well, see their junk. Oh God, there are so, a lot of game of Thrones characters in here. And there that are was one of their favorite moves. Characters. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. DJ, what do you think about the sticks? So, Okay. So during Nemesis, like, awesome badass fight, right? She has, like, two short swords, more mm-hmm. or less. And she fights with them normal, but then sometimes, it's not clear what she does if she hits a button or whatever, but they turn, like, vaguely red, but also don't seem to do anything more. Yeah. Like, the vague redness of it doesn't seem to add anything. It makes them look like lightsabers, DJ. It makes in them look like worse thought, lightsabers. In, in case anyone thought this wasn't a Star Wars thing, we can look at the lightsabers and go, no, but it is, though. Yeah, no, like, let, 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 come on, it's, it's Star Wars. Um, yeah, very, very silly. I, yeah, no, I, I think that was just it, that I was, like, not baffled by the decision, but it is, like, nuts to just have it rip from Star Wars so bad, but not mean anything. Yeah. Her swords didn't need to turn red. They no. need to turn red. I'm pretty sure earlier in the fight, she chops off some limbs with just the machete parts of the sword. But then yeah, she, she does. does a kill move and chops off a different limb with the flaming sword. 
or whatever. But yeah, it doesn't seem like it's crucial for the fight at all. You nope. know, it's really funny how every time she chops off a limb in that fight, the <laughs> Jenna Malone like backs off and goes like, ah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. for like a minute. And it's like, on the one hand, I don't know, if someone cut off my leg, I would probably not take it very well. I'd probably yeah. be in pain. Uh, I wouldn't. But also, it's like, in the middle of this cool fight, you just have these long stretches where Jenna Malone is just like, ah, and not doing anything. Like, right. Nemesis, I get you're going for a cool stoic samurai thing, but this feels like the time to strike. Yeah. Also, and- I was it, just going to say, this feels like the bit where you'd skip press A to skip the cutscene before she grows their second health bar yep. for the second bit of the fight. Because, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. I did love this fight in Elden Ring. I was going to say, the one in Jedi Survivor is what it reminded me of so much. <laughs> Another thing very silly about this is that there's no discussion about how if, like, Nemesis is joining their crew, seemingly this, like, city or town wherever is losing, like, their best guy. Yeah. Like, spiders are going to be eating children without Nemesis around. Like, there's no discussion of that. And mm-hmm. she's just very ready to leave and help these guys out. So, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. they blackmailed her or something. We never found out. Maybe yeah, she didn't want to go, in, but they took her. That'll be in the R-rated cut because, yeah. uh, I don't know, Kai says a fuck word when mm-hmm. he blackmails her. <laughs> but yeah, now that you mention it, I don't. I guess it's weird that we don't see any other characters like her either, or there's no explanation for what she is. At least with Jedi, yeah. it's like, I'm a Jedi. There's not a lot of us left over, but, you know, that's, that's right. what Obi-Wan Kenobi is in those. She's also like a cyborg because at one point Jenna mm. Malone like oh yeah stabs her arm and it's all robot and then she pulls the stab out and then she's cool again. It's like I think mm-hmm. that still broke some of the arm, right? Can we just not use that arm anymore? No, it's fine. Nah, yeah, it's all don't good. worry about it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The lightsabers are weird. Um, uh, also I really didn't like how they look. I feel like they with all the smoke they really cloud the scenes that they're in. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, unfortunately, the way to make lightsabers cool is already a technology yeah. that uh, is owned by another property. So we have to do it a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's dumb. Uh, what else was cool? Oh, I spun the wheel again. Uh, it's landed on one of mine. Uh, hey, maybe don't have Che Guevara unload the ship. So, like, <laughs> that part I found so strange. <laughs> Because he's a secret guy. The other guys are like weird where you'd be like, that's the nemesis. She's like a super space badass. But presumably people could find her if they wanted to. But with Ray Fisher, I'm like, this guy is a very secret revolutionary leader whose whole planet just got massacred because they used to have him. And then he's unloading the ship with the rest of them. Put him in a little hat or something. <laughs> like, disguise uh, him. I, I do love, by the way... This is jumping way back. So they, they're to like their original goal is to find him, Cora and Gunnar. Right. Um, and they so they're like, Gunnar, you sold grain to them. Um, so you have a guy who you can who can help you get in touch. And they go there and that guy's being arrested, and they're like, Oh no. Uh, how can we possibly find them now? Gunnar, did you know anything else? And he's like, only their exact location and <laughs> how to get there and who to yep. talk to once we get there to get the message to them. It's like, so you had everything already is what I'm hearing. Yep. That's great. Uh, they did that. And, they, and also they're, but they're, they are when she hears that, like, Oh, it'll be so hard to get there. They, they just go there. Yep. There's, there's no hardship involved. Weird thing about this movie is all of its actions, all of its action scenes are the individual warriors saying, check this shit out and not anything that actually has to do with the plot or flow of the movie itself. Yeah. So yeah. everything that should be, I have like an action scene to be like, Oh, we encountered some hardship to do this is they just show up and then somebody does some pointless shit. Yeah. Oh, this movie's bad. You guys. No, it's not it's bad. Good. It's bad. It's quite bad. Uh, I spun the wheel again, landed on one of Diggins's 1v1 me, bro. I assume we're talking about the ending now. Um, it could be. Okay. Uh, I, I more meant the spider thing about how. Oh, sure. But this that does also sense. happen now. Yeah. 
where the Admiral and Korra just decide to, to have a face off. Yeah. yeah, throw down. Throw down. And I'm like, you're an Admiral. I don't think you're like super cool and good at hand to hand combat. That's not what I would expect from He you. has a stick. Yeah, he, that's he's, his he's like signature lately. thing. It's like a discipline stick. He beats subordinates who can't fight back. It's also wild that that's the thing in this like futuristic. Because Zack like, Snyder hates Ireland, I assume. Or whoever wrote the movie hates Ireland. To be fair, he may not have written it. He co-wrote it. Oh, okay. So he co-hates Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> he co-signed as, hating Ireland. As far as we know. Yeah, who yeah, else so wrote this? Kurt Johnstead and Shay Hatton. I don't know what their deals are, but cool. Yeah, so like after after Ray Fisher gives up his life to crash the ship, which was anyone else slightly confused if he was dead until like the final moment? Yeah, I, I'm like he he could have made it out. Actually, would have been cooler if he made it out, but I guess they had to kill him because I guess Ray it's Fisher. supposed to be when the gunfire when like he gets shot by the laser the first time. It's supposed to be oh no, now he's dead, but like yeah. there's no wound. Well, right. So, but I think we see like one of the bullets go through him. Like, I feel like there was a shot where I was like, oh, that's like his chest. But we don't see I, it. We only see it travel out from the back. I couldn't tell if it was that or if the person missed. Oh. I, the, the, the like, angle was such that it could have been either one, I think. Yeah. I guess in my head, I was like, the language of the movie is telling me he's dead. But I didn't really question right, it yeah. too much. But that was but the only thing like, you had to go off of. Surely yeah. they wouldn't kill this character who just showed up and hasn't had any characterization yet. Surely they wouldn't expect me to care about this. Mm, well, wrong. they did. Yeah, they did. So pretty cool. Uh, but it makes a little platform float out above the just 500 mile drop that this port is on for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Cora and Atticus end up there and they have a shirtless well the Atticus is shirtless. Cora is still got a shirt. Except maybe in the four maybe hour the version fir- she yeah. doesn't. Maybe it was CGI'd hey. on after the fact. Could be. The movie looks bad enough. Um <laughs> and yeah, I just I just I don't understand how this is supposed to be like a, a real tension building final battle because it's like Oh, who's going to win? The super cool super soldier who's won every fight or a guy in an office? <laughs> yeah. Some guy. Yeah, because, yeah, it's funny. Will again lands on one of yours, Bizcash Admiral. Like, he's got a strange look. So in the first scene, he's wearing like a super, like, I mean, I guess it is just like a modern Admiral's outfit, but it's got enough, like, little bits and accoutrement that I was like, oh, it's like a space Admiral outfit. Like, they wear in Star Wars. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. it's it's like Grand Moff Tarkin's deal in Star Wars, whatever. But then later he takes off the jacket of it and he's just wearing a collared button up shirt and a black tie. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look right. Yeah, it's pretty it's, weird. It's such a it's such a contemporary look that it doesn't belong in the space future. Maybe yeah. that's the one true clothes. Like just in the future, they will we will still have business casual outfits. But like Doctors. whenever when we see like the other people, the other like empire people, they're like in Roman regalia. Yeah, that's true. And he's just clocking in Wednesday morning. Yeah. No jacket too. The shirt tie. Well, I think his big admiral jacket goes over the shirt. Oh, top. Okay. I mean, that's but even weirder. Like, it is weirder. Yes. <laughs> it's like wearing an overcoat with no suit jacket. I don't know. This movie. One of the other visual things we haven't really talked about is the guns. Speaking of things that kind of look sci-fi, but also kind of not. The guns are interesting, aren't they? I think they're fairly sci-fi. They're like big and chunky. Feels like what they fire is like little molten lead or something. All the bullets yeah. explode a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because Zaxxar needs that effect for when it goes slow mo. It's boom. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. Yeah, I don't. That could have been cool. I guess they're they're not lasers. No. I don't. I don't think so. 
Well, we get no explanation of this universe, so... Pff, like, we, we barely get an explanation of the characters. We get no info on the world. We have no idea what the conflict is. Uh, there no were, sense. There were a bunch of kings, DJ, and then one king got assassinated, and now that's bad. Yep. The glory of the mother world seemed without end until the treachery of an assassin's blade struck down the king and queen. Oh, notice how it didn't say the princess there. Mm. Oh so, uh, yeah. Bad. bad it's pretty good. Also, there's a line in this beginning of this. Now that I'm looking at the original scroll or whatever we're calling this. Uh, it just reads 1,000 kings ruled unchallenged in succession. Yeah, that's how kings work. You don't have to say in succession. We get it. Um, it wasn't like I king, mean, president, king, president, king, president, king. Uh, I mean, it is kind of uh, unusual in a historical sense for kings to peacefully transfer power for a thousand kings without there ever being any succession war. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah, I guess I read that the way it was like, and then the king was the king, and then his son was the king, and then his son was the king, etc. Cetera, et cetera, right, like et that's ridiculous. But yeah, yeah the uh, they have to tell us. Got to use those words. Um, well, actually, they were just trying to tell us that this is actually set in the same universe as Succession, the show. Oh, that would explain the business casual. Yeah, yeah it's true. He just hey. came from Roy Star or whatever that company's mm-hmm. called. We star Royco. And that would explain um the tentacle sex. That's something that what's his name would do. Well, I guess a lot of them would. Tom would do it. Tom would get tricked into Tom doing do it, it by uh Roman. Um Atticus seems like he wanted it. He's yeah, oh for it. sure. Yeah, he's the Roman of this group, probably. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Who who is uh who is Carrie Elwis in this metaphor? I guess he's well, is he Brian Cox? Well, no, Bella Sawyer no. would be Brian Cox, right? Yeah, who is who is Carrie Elwes? I guess Carrie Elwes is that Nan, that British. Oh no, Carrie Elwes is um the the, the Scarsgard brother who shows up in the the end of it. Oh, uh, yeah, got the jo- Gojo, the yeah, um, with the other force of of that. Unless he might be Ray Fisher. Hmm, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched that show. But I loved it. We all loved it. It was the best yep. show last year. Yeah. Just like, Wait hey, well, it'll be this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure. It will be. Uh, Spun the Wheel again. One of D- Diggins' is curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. It's on the wheel. They I do mean, it. it. They did it. Another betrayal. And here's, so here's the thing I alluded to earlier, where it's like, I feel like there's such an easy way to both make this make more sense and give it a lot more weight as Mm -hmm. like an emotional moment which is uh he's going around describing like oh so you're the you're the Mm, fucking prince boy and you're the the general that everyone thinks is cool and you're the nemesis you killed a bunch of imperial officers and then it's you and here's where he could reveal i i know who you are uh whatever her real name is Zalanthia or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, uh, and he he says like, they, you know what happened to my world? They burned it down. They destroyed oh, yeah. it. They killed everybody. And what I thought would happen and would make way more sense if it was what happened was that he would then say, "And you were there leading the charge." Because mm-hmm. mm. then that's why he recognizes her. That's why he's like invested in doing this crazy plan to get her arrested. It forces her to confront the consequences of her past in a way that she hasn't had to so far. It's like, it's, it feels so obvious. It felt so obvious to me in the moment that that, that's not what happened. I felt like I was losing my mind. I was like, how do you have three writers on this movie? And none of you thought of that. Well, to be fair, two of them were busy doing the new Army of the Dead movies, the two spinoffs of that. So they were probably busy with that. Yeah, Army of Dead, Las Vegas, and Planet of the Dead. And by the way, I said Lost Vegas, not Las Vegas, Lost Vegas. Because oh, they lost the it to the to zombies. Uh, I hope so. Never found out what happened on that island. You know, they never said it. They didn't have characters sit down and go, this is what the island was. So I think we would have gotten that in this. <laughs> That would have been pretty cool. 
<laughs> Let me break it down for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, instead he's just like, I love money and end of story. Mm-hmm. That's my and deal. I hate though. guys, so I'm going to do so it. so much. Uh, I told you the story about how everyone died on my planet because that means I don't care, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty weird. I don't know. The movie like has like a fake, out, and I feel like the movie tries to set up what's his name, Gooner, as the fake out, like a uh, spy kind of guy, um, because he did the move with the grain. He tried to just kind of sell the guys out for grain, uh, but by that point, I had forgotten that was even a thing. So I, when, when anybody was revealed to be the bad guy, I was like, wait, but didn't the bad guys just kill the fish people to find out where these guys were going? I just figured they'd show up because of that, but does not do it. Oh yeah. Mm. They kill the fish guy scene where the villain has a big monologue about how charity is inherently bad. Just in case you had missed the notion that they're not good guys. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Uh, and I spent the one last time, DJ Stick Vader. Let's talk about this. The Stick guy. Vader, man. So we've talked a lot about the Admiral. We 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 spent m- m- much time kind of going over his deal. Um, they they made the Darth Vader. He's he's like the main antagonist, and he's got an emperor, and and they they did the whole thing. It's just very strange to me that they had to have this like tube scene with all the liquids, like make him come back, and like I get it, you want him to come back, but like. To, to I guess but killing why him. yeah <laughs> but why but why <laughs> no but why no, that's you exactly said, like, it you said like I get it you want him to come back I'm like I don't get it why do you want him to come back be, because because Zack Snyder needs the big bad to also be around again I don't know man well, it's just it's weird because it's got the fucking Aquaman 2 thing where it's like no I saw the good guy kill this guy last movie I don't need to see him do it again <laughs> I think he's still gonna kill this guy <laughs> I imagine there's other people that he could try to kill that would be tougher than this guy, but it's and just also, him. like, that's what Belisarius is for. Yeah. To <laughs> set up the, the greater the, the greater scope villain so he'll come in in part two and he's who they have to fight now. Right. Like, we don't need this guy anymore. No, no, fight Admiral again. He's filled with liquids now and he must be fought again. Yeah, he's got blue juices <laughs> instead of red and he's good. <laughs> So many juices. Yeah. Also, like, does that guy live in the computer then? What's that guy's deal? Yeah, I wasn't super clear on that one. Me neither. Maybe he's like the god emperor of mankind from Warhammer 40k, where he's mm. just like on life support on the home world. Ah, uh, that's possible. Um, and is just connected to the thing. Uh, probably not, though. Probably yeah. he's going to be fine in the next movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to upset all the Zack Snyder fans, but this reminds me of the Captain Marvel villain, who's like a computer that goes to the Shadow Realm and talks to you and tells you stuff. So mm. that's probably oh, yeah. where they got it from. Uh, yeah, but then it turns out killing that computer was bad. Mm-hmm. Kind of. If you if you really don't read into it at all, just blame yourself immediately. Then it was bad. Yeah. I don't know. That's all the stuff on the wheel. But like, is there anything else about this movie? It's weird. I, it's it's very bad. I no one should watch it. Like to, like if you got Netflix, save save your time and energy. I mean, statistically, you've already watched. it. Yeah, You're most one of us of have hundreds right, of millions true. of people who've already watched it. Or cats. We or don't know cats. about all the cats or listening cats. to this podcast. I, mm-hmm. I and that's it. assuming that two people is the average. This movie specifically may have gotten far more. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I started this, I said, come on, everybody, come in, come in, come in. I opened the door and I like, threw the window open and was like, everybody, it's Rebel Moon time. And the children of the neighborhood, the elderly, everybody came and watched it with me. So that's like 50 yeah. people. If Zach yeah, wants to got- throw that into the stat, he can, he can remember it. You want to make an event out of it. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like the it's like the finale of Succession every, every time you watch Rebel Moon, even if it's like the second or third time. So it's pretty good. I also love that he cited the numbers in that as if there's not a humongous fan campaign that I'm sure exists to make rebel moon, the most watched thing ever or something. Right. It's it's, it, it was all over. Yeah. 
What was there? There was actually like release the Rebel Snyder Rebel cut, right? Like that well, was actually because no, they it was announced before the movie even came out that they were going to do it. They didn't need a campaign. He probably oh, waited for one tweet to come in and then was like, "Oh, you said it. I'm doing it. All right. <laughs> if you say so, I didn't want to, but oh, I don't twist Netflix, my arm. you're doing it." That's why I think it's so self-indulgent because yeah. it's not like the Justice League situation where he came in and like recut a movie that he didn't get final say on. Right. He just made two versions of the movie for no reason. Yeah. yeah it's like, you tell me which one is the good one. I'll watch that one. <laughs> and I, I mean, may, if, unless it's the four hour long one, then I'd actually like the two hour long one. But I'd love it if you would just say the two hour long one's the real one. That would be cool. I might be misremembering this, but didn't like he say like he ha- like Netflix made him make the shorter cut. I'm sure they made him do it, but also like it's not Justice League. Like it's not like a finale of a movie he made. He could just make he could do whatever he wants. Just don't do it then. Go to Paramount like, or something. Yeah. Like go to Quibi. Other other networks. Go will. to Quibi. <laughs> this is streaming. The money doesn't Come count. On. They'll all do it. Any one of yeah. them would love a shot it's at all this. Just, it's all just VC money that they're <laughs> yeah. throwing into a big bonfire. Like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> yeah, they don't get anything for 180 million cats watching it, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I wish, I do wish they had to, like, oh, man. I don't know. I imagine you could buy this at a DVD, like, you know, like a, a Blockbuster or something. Um, they still make those, right? Uh, what's the word I was looking for? Best Buy? You could probably buy Rebel Moon. Oh, sure. I hope there's a Zack Snyder's director's cut version and a Zack Snyder's director's cut version and they're different, but you don't know which one you have until you open it because they're both the director's cut, but they're the director's cut. Um, Cause yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know. I also don't know how, cause here's my question about the, the four hour long cut. If they saw the reviews and went, we actually have to say there's something else, right? Otherwise people will be mad. So then the reviews came out, movie release, and he said, we're making a four-hour long one. I feel like that kind of read as what happened. Um, you know, I do have one more thing to say about this movie, actually. So at yeah. the end, they're all journeying to the village uh, and being like, it's cool that we don't have to fight for this village anymore, that everything's right. fine now. Why are some of you coming then? Like, Jimon Hansu and... Uh, 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 and Nemesis and the lady who came to protect Darian and failed. Like, don't you guys have other things you should be doing? I mean, especially Nemesis. She should go back and make sure spiders are not abducting more children. Right. Yeah. Like I, like, I get that there's going to be another part of this movie and they have to be there to do the big battle because they are going to come back because the Admiral didn't die. But like, you don't know that. Why are you going to the village? I would imagine the explanation the movie would give is they were like, we'll pay you in grain at some point. And then they're like going to pick up their grain checks. Like maybe, but then they're just going to leave immediately after, unless there's a big explosion or something. But that's when they build a moat and other defensive structures. Yeah. Train the villagers in bamboo spears. Mm hmm. Uh, and but one farmer on an outlying part refuses to leave and he gets attacked by the bandits and they go to rescue him, but they don't succeed. And it's a poignant <laughs> moment. Yeah. And one of them has an affair with a local girl from the village, even though they're from different social classes. But by the end of the movie, they go their separate ways because they know that in reality, their love could never be. You That'll really probably be Anthony out. Hopkins. <laughs> Probably him, the bird. Why the did boys. he have deer antlers out at the end? What was that? It's a Where tough, did it cool, come manly from? thing. But who, why? It, it, there's I mean, nothing. Technically, I think they did kill a deer in the first scene, and they're like, that's what they're eating. I think that's why they're having like yeah, the little party. Cora's I mean, boy toy is a big hunter who found a bunch of cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Kai drops a little nugget. He's like, I know you love what I know you love her. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's telling Gunner Gunner to paralyze her, and I'm like, he does. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. For I honestly forgot that. I mean, it's if a thing where like, so. if you, yeah, if you told me like they're from the same village, they're about the same age, they're both single, I'd be like, yeah, I guess so. He's pro- they probably both thought of it. They have these weird orgies whenever they cr- like That's grow true. crops. I'm sure they've you know knocked boots or whatever. Maybe Did- it just didn't work. 
didn't the one girl at the beginning say, oh, Takora, oh, I thought I heard something from your tent last well, night. Well, she does Someone say that, but I think she's lying because Kor doesn't lie to the old man. Like, I feel like she tells the old man she didn't have sex with the guy, and that I, I assume that's true. Right. Um, that's 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 not Gunnar. That's Den, the hunter. Yeah. That she's like, oh, I heard... Okay. I heard the sounds of wild, passionate lovemaking coming from his place. <laughs> Which is like, that's a weird way to say that, you know? I heard you were having sex last night. Not I heard from people. I listened to it. Sounds yeah, great. I heard, I heard your, your passionate screams of joy and ecstasy. Yeah. I stood below the window and I listened as every <laughs> every oh. inch of your body was explored by his tongue. I actually oh, have some notes here you. at one minute and 15 seconds in. Uh, it sounded like something did very something creative happened. Uh, I don't know what that was, but yeah, you can like, remember. You could, I would star could, that. Yeah. Yeah. If you could fill me in. Uh, <laughs> the points where you sounded like you were having in the most throes of passion mm-hmm. feeling the ecstasy racking your body i just want to know what the moves were so i can you know experiment later it's weird how inconsistent all the uh, um uh accents are too why does it the little girl have it i mean i i know why the little girl doesn't have an accent but like she's the princess right right but like uh, ha- whatever his name is michael hausman and doesn't have an accent. He has an accent, but it's not the same one as Corey Stoll's accent. It's Michael Hausman's traditional Dutch accent, I think, is, is where he's from. So, like, I don't know. It's really weird, like, that Corey Stoll is doing an accent in this. But again, if you ever wanted to try one, this would be the time. So, get it all out <laughs> yeah. of your system before. Yeah, this one doesn't count. So, yeah, yeah just go nuts. Mm-hmm. Try something. Uh, ugh, yeah. Uh, next one is comes out in a month, I think. April something nineteenth, yeah, like I want to say. Less yeah, than a month. A month. Get ready, everybody. It's uh, I'll never be ready. <laughs> it's nearly here. Uh, well, before that, do you want to get to our classic segment? Our classic segment. I yeah, recommending like some things to the fine people. DJ, do you have anything to recommend? Yes, I do, Nando. Um, so I have been uh watching all of Christopher Nolan's movies for uh. Uh, a podcast I'm going to be on, which I'll, I'll I'll talk about once it happens and once it airs, um, which like I mostly saw all of them before, but there's this one movie that caught my eye um, that I never heard of. I wasn't even aware of. Are, are you guys Batman familiar? Batman Begins. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. It's, have you guys heard of Batman Begins? Um, l- little movie, uh, uh, a short film by Christopher Nolan called Following. Have you guys like heard or watched this movie? I've heard of it. I have not watched it. Yes. Yeah, same. Okay. Okay. Um, it's like pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like, I mean, you could like roll your eyes at like, oh, Christopher Nolan's just doing his like weird kind of yeah, fuck that uh, guy. He doesn't yeah, even we hate Christopher. <laughs> yeah, Nolan on this podcast, his movies all suck. Not like Rebel Moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like it's it's it, it it feels like a very interesting um kind of exploration of like you know like what could a person's motivation be for you know um i don't know being a fucking weirdo and like not that i think all of those reasons are good um but like it's 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 kind of cool to see his deconstruction of like how his other movies come to be in like this early movie of like um asynchronous not asynchronous um non-linear storytelling Mm. and exclusive use of black and white and mm. kind of a mystery with a twist, right? So we know it's, this storyline takes place exclusively in the Robert Downey Jr. verse of Oppenheimer. <laughs> like this is all going on right as that Senate hearing is happening. That's right. Cool. Yeah, exactly. That's that that that's the big uh, uh, the big reveal. Yeah, JFK does um, a murder or something. He's like, "I'm you're following me, JFK." <laughs> um, but I I thought it was interesting. Um, I. I, I I don't know, I enjoyed it. I, I I had never heard of it, never watched it, but like it's 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 less than a tight ninety because it's a short film. It's like a little over an hour, and um, like it's good, it's a good watch. It's on Tubi, so you don't even have to like pay anything to watch it. You just have to endure slightly inconveniencing uh, inconvenience in inconvenient. There we go. There mm. you go. I'm with it. Raleigh. S- Ra- Riley. <laughs> slightly inconvenient ad breaks that just cut in the middle for no reason. And it's weird because it's this like grainy black and white gritty movie to bright ads about why I got to buy 
fucking DoorDash, whatever. Um, mm, DoorDash, so you say? Yeah, we love DoorDash. Uh, so that's weird. But the the movie, the movie is good. It's a good movie. Short, I don't think that's a short film or movie. Hour 10 is not short film, right? That's like a regular movie. I mean, it's, it's not, not a feature, feature I don't think. Right. Well, whatever. Eh, like 90 minutes. Yeah. There, there have been features that are like 70 minutes long. That's well, true. Like Kung Fu way, Panda 4. Yeah, 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 that was exactly. pretty short. Um, either way, it's good. I'd recommend it. It's called Following by Christopher Nolan. You can watch it on Tubi. And uh, yeah, that's my recommendation. I don't have any other rec because my whole week has been like watching Nolan movies. Mm. So my whole week. I, You've God, been I'm neglecting waiting. your son for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm waiting for the twist of this podcast, by the way. Waiting for one of you to tell me that. I I actually did win the game or whatever. Mm, well, yeah, his name cool. is that name you thought it was. It's not the oh, one Diggin said and IMDb Riley said. Beckett. Yeah, it's Riley Beckett. Damn right. Uh, Diggins, do you have anything to wreck for the fine folks? I do. Uh, I, I saw a movie this past weekend um, that I had been looking forward to. Um, a little movie called Love Lies Bleeding. Oh, how, how was that? Um, so here's the thing. <gasps> I did like it. Okay. I, I didn't like it quite as much as I was hoping I would. Cause I feel like there's a core. So if you haven't heard of this movie, it's the Kristen Stewart, uh, movie where she, uh, is like a gym manager. She starts a relationship with this bodybuilder, uh, paid, played by a woman who is a real bodybuilder. I yeah, Aquaman, remember. or not Aquaman, excuse me, Ant-Man 3 Zone, Jen Thora, I believe, is uh, that actor? Oh, yeah. She, she was also Andor, in, yeah. not Andor, what's the other one that's not as good? Obi-Wan. No, the other, other one. Oh, Mandalorian Season 3. I think she's, like, in that, too? Uh, I think you're right. She's, like, an Imperial officer who fucks over somebody at some point. I can't really remember, but, yeah, she's in there. She's She's popping up all over the place these days. Yeah, so uh, they they kind of like start a relationship, but then uh, events cause them to get sucked into the criminal empire of Kristen Stewart's father, um, and sort of like becomes like a romance thriller from there. And I think the romance thriller of the kind of like messed up love story aspect of it, I think is strong and works well. I think they try to do some other stuff with it. Um some more experimental or like trying to put like different themes and ideas in there. And I feel like none of them get developed enough to really gel with everything else that's going on in the movie. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Like some of the places it goes and some of the things they do, like, filmmaking wise uh and i again overall i did enjoy it and i think it's a good movie that i would recommend you watch uh but just bear in mind that it's it's a little messy and a little uh unfocused in a way that might make you be like "Mm, not as good as i was hoping but still still well worth watching so that's uh love lies bleeding Uh, um what about you nando did you have anything you wanted to recommend oh my god so speaking of movies, uh, well, oh yeah, we'll start with the movie. Uh, finally watched Zone of Interest. Um, I, much like that one guy on CNN, didn't like it because I didn't understand it. Just kidding. I don't know if you saw this. There was a reviewer who put out a review that's like, I don't under, I like he, uh, I don't know. They just, I'm feel not. Like a, I, I, I mean, it's a, it's an artful movie. I wouldn't say it's a difficult one to understand. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Well, here, how about this? I'll give you this is an this is a line from the review. I I just find this review fascinating. I think they should study it in schools. What the satiric movie Saltburn does for the English upper class, the zone of interest is doing for national socialism. Uh so it's like Saltburn, you know? Cool. Yeah, I don't know how this guy watched this movie, but he watched it wrong. I don't know oh, if there's yeah, like yeah. It, I mean, I'd love to hear his story. Um but I'm yeah, trying, I'm trying to have an audible response to this because this is a podcast and words are failing me. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to read another quote from the article. I had gotten this far in it before because I stopped at a really weird sentence and then um, clipped it for Twitter. Uh, this is this is the end of it. 
uh, not to spoil it, and this doesn't really spoil it, but uh, there's a long history of fascination with the aesthetics of the Third Reich, as in films of Lenny Riefenstahl. Back in 1975, Susan Sontag wrote a perceptive essay condemning the fat fetishization of Nazi paraphernalia. The zone of interest will certainly appeal to those who admire the aesthetics of Nazism, the striking uniforms, the distinctive fashy, short for fascist, haircuts, the nice animals. It will also appear to people appeal to people who like gardening. But people who want insights into the tragic history of the Holocaust should look elsewhere. Fascinating. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, I love right? It. I love it so much. What a That's wild funny. take. Masterful. I mean, first of all, the title of this is The Zone of Interest, a Holocaust movie without Jews, which is also fascinating because in the review a couple times they say that sentence. And I'm like, there were a couple, though. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> they were there. And also, like, yeah, it's kind of. I. Just... I guess the movie lacks. A person who comes on screen points at the Nazis and goes, these guys are bad. Yeah. <laughs> these guys, no good. Mm-hmm. And I guess in that sense. It's, yeah, wild. But other than that. I'm honestly. Would that have helped, though, if someone did that? Would that have been. It would have helped this guy, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> he would have loved it. He would, he would, I don't know if he likes Rebel Moon either, though. I don't think Rebel Moon's that clear in its philosophy. I think Rebel Moon honestly could have used the character to go, these are the bad guys for reasons X, Y, and Z, and we're the good guys that, for reasons yes. X, Y, and Z. That would have helped for yeah, sure. Yeah, honestly, Rebel Moon could use that guy. Listen, guy's there's not should, always bad. Yeah, you know? there should be a rule in screenwriting that you have to write that scene. You take it away, you don't put it in the movie, but it exists. Just so someone that reads the script can go, oh, right, yeah, that, that does fit. Um, because... <laughs> But yeah, man. So you know when you're writing the rest of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, you can check back, back to go, that scene and be like, revenge. right, so they shouldn't, sure. they shouldn't do that thing because that's yeah. not why they do stuff. Mm hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so I saw Zone of Interest. I think it's, I mean, it's as good as it can be. Like, it's, you know, a real bummer. It's no fun. Obviously, it's no fun. But like, okay, it's no fun in the way that, like, I think there were a lot of movies this year that were serious movies, like Oppenheimer, that were also, you know, like, you, you would say someone, you want to watch the Oppenheimer biopic that's like three hours long? It would be a joke you'd make two years ago to be like, of course not. That's going to be the most boring movie ever. But then it's this, this kind of, you know, there's there's humor. There's all kinds of interesting sex scenes with Florence Pugh and reading the say their famous lines. Yeah, reading the catchphrase. Like, I do think this one, this movie is exactly what you think it is, except for what this guy thinks it is. But, like, what what you expect. Um, and in that way, it is good and interesting. Uh, but, you know, just, you know, be ready for that. Um, it's also pretty, I don't want to say long, but there's, like, a couple of bits where, like, specifically the intro, because I, obviously I didn't see this in a theater. In a theater, does it just play, like, black screen weird synthy noise or whatever it is for like five minutes because i feel like there was this there was an intro that made me go like did i get the wrong one or something like is this not yeah. it yeah no pretty okay. much that, that makes sense um so yeah that was cool uh like it was a good movie I, it was good i still think I, now that i've seen all of them except for maestro which i know i wouldn't like i do think anatomy of a fall is probably my favorite of the best pictures um it's a good choice and uh you know that means uh, what's her name? Sandra Huller or something Huller. Sandra she, Huller, yeah. She wins even though she's in this movie and it didn't win because she's in two of them, which is crazy. Those are the um, rules. Those are the rules. Uh, but besides that, I also watch things that aren't like, I mean, this is kind of a bummer. I watched the Love is Blind finale. Uh, if you want opposite end of the spectrum, but also just really unbelievable stuff happens on this thing like we get to the point where a every character comes into the love is blind finale with a speech uh and like references and then b all the questioners come into the love is blind finale with printed out tweets and stuff so the, everybody's referencing everybody else and it's like it's it's wild um the this this finale is so bad that um, How the, bad is it? It's so bad Damn. that the main guys, Nick and Vanessa Lachey, definitely, because they've never done this before, brought on old couples to be in the audience. Because if they didn't uh. do that, the whole show would seem like a crazy thing to do. Because obviously this is a disaster. Like, you have failed miserably. 
they all hate each other and cheated on each other or whatever. But like three years ago, we found some people that actually liked each other. So it's not stupid that we do this. It's an experiment, you guys. We're doing it for science. Um, yeah, it was great. I mean, I loved it. Um, hashtag justice for the one that's, uh, I can't remember any of their names. The one that dressed up as White Castle or uh, what was it? I forget. Not White Castle. Taco Bell for Halloween. Oh, um, she's uh, cool. Laura? Yeah, I like Laura. Yeah. Um, she's my favorite one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The show's weird. Um, uh, other thing I watched, uh, Girls 5 Eva is back, but, but one of my favorite shows, probably like my favorite comedy going right now besides Curb. Uh, it's the 30 Rock kind of, not like spinoff, but like spiritual sequel about a band, a girl band like uh, the Spice Girls or more like Danity Kane uh, from the 90s, One Hit Wonder, that uh, their song gets featured in like a rap song. And now they're all adults, but they kind of go, we can maybe be musicians again. And uh, it's just super funny. And all the music in it is great. Sarah Bareilles writes it all uh, with other people. But like, it's that Lonely Island kind of thing where you're like, this is a parody song, but this could also be a real song. And those are all really great. Um, Yeah, it's one of those seasons. It's like six episodes long. So take your time, you know, savor it. Uh, But I, yeah, I love that show. Um, Nonetheless, thing, speaking of things that I love, and speaking of things that watching Rebel Moon and then watching this in the same day is as whiplash as it can get. I watched the new X-Men show, X-Men 97, uh, and it's great. It's incredible. Like, I do think they should maybe make X-Men shows for children, but until they do, this is the best we're going to get. So it's pretty Even cool. Even though you were worried about it? I mean, I was I was I was worried about it. I was just like, I wish we had other X-Men. I mean, A, I'm worried about everything that comes out with X-Men in it um, because they could mess it up. Anybody could. Uh, but B, I just think there should be X-Men for kids that's silly and kind of like a high school and X-Men for adults that's this. Uh, and this is the, you know, the best version of that first one or the second one. So, you know, they should make a second one. Something silly. We don't make this stuff for kids anymore. Uh, Nando, this is all for sad adults. It really is. Like between Ghostbusters and this coming out in the same week, it's like, Woof. but at least this is, it really is like good. Like, I don't think I could convince a child to watch it without having to watch the old stuff because they probably wouldn't get some of it. But I do think you would, a kid would like enjoy it because it looks amazing. It is also adapting some storylines from the comics that are not what I expected it would be doing. Um, Like it's doing some things where like I did know based on toys, like, Oh, they're doing her. That's great. But there were some other things that happened, especially in the second episode that I'm like, Oh, that storyline that happened around that same time, but I never thought they would touch. Uh, So that that's cool. I love it. I think everybody's going to like it, though. The reviews are, it's like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. I think it's like Marvel's best thing ever, uh, review-wise. So I, I heard they, recommend people uh, watch it. I heard they made Cyclops a Chad also. They did. Cyclops has a, it's episode one of Cyclops is like, it's like it was written by Cyclops. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think he could even do all this shit, but it would be cool if I saw him do it. Like, I would like that. Um Cause yeah, it, it does like, I think there's a lot of characters and there's some that I'm like, I hope we see Bishop and Morph say a couple lines eventually. But I do think like for this first episode, focusing so heavily on Cyclops, the second one's kind of the Magneto episode. Like it makes sense um, to reestablish what these guys are. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, sad, you know, nineties and eighties uh, throwback stuff. What are we doing next week? You guys. Hmm. Ghostbusters, blow the jobs. Frozen Empire, if we can hope. Yeah. Blowjobs. Do you think Dan Aykroyd's going to get one again? He's in yeah. this one again. He's going to get a frozen one. Yeah, Ooh. he's going he's to pull oh. it out, and then it's going to freeze, and he'll be like, oh, no. Yeah, this is a snow job now. That'll be how we know the ghost is near. Everybody will be like, I feel like chill, but I don't know what it is. And he'll like open up his pants and go, they're here. <laughs> Little, little, like little, like smoke will come out of it, like when you're when you're you can see your breath. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what if that was what Ghostbusters was? It's not about ghosts doing, but you know the ghosts all want to suck his dick. They come out of the portals <laughs> and go right for him. I, I mean, if a horde of unruly ghosts <laughs> all wanted to suck my dick, I do think that would be a genuine emergency. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like in a line crisis. too outside his apartment like they're waiting patiently for the net last one to be done <laughs> but like 
the other Ghostbusters who are like hearing about this. And they're like, so what do we do about it? And Dan Marco's like, I don't know, but I don't think this is what ghosts usually do, right? Like it's going to stop eventually. <laughs> the human body only contains so many fluids. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like, um, yeah, oh man. I mean, I like, listen, we'll see. This, this one might be great. Probably not, but maybe it's, it will. It's not, but no, it might be. Probably not. <laughs> But maybe there'll be an alternate universe version of it where this is what happens. Like maybe that when they reboot it, they'll just do that scene. Like have you guys ever seen that that clip of RoboCop, but where he shoots off a bunch of guys' dicks? So funny. <laughs> Remind me of that. Um, also, is podcast in this one? We'll find out next week. Um, I still haven't watched the first one. Like the one. It's got podcast this, so. in it, so <laughs> it I don't know how you waited this long. Besides that, it's fine. Um, but and I even listened to the podcast you guys did on it, but I never watched the movie. It's the only we time spent most of that podcast, podcast talking about Dan Aykroyd getting a I remember job, so. blowjob I remember. and podcast. Those were the two and things. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Besides that, there's not really that much going on. You're kind of like, how old are these kids supposed to be? All right, let's let's talk about this kid that's walking around with a, with a podcast set. When did he get the name podcast? Does it has it stuck, or is he just convinced these new kids that he's called podcast? His name is podcast. But everyone else yeah. calls him John. Did he legally change his name? Yeah. What happens if podcasts kind of go out? Is he still going to do that, or is he going to be like TikTok boy? You know? Ooh. Because maybe TikTok. Maybe that is what it's going to be in this movie. He'll be. They'll be like, "Hey, podcast." He's like, "It's TikTok now." Yeah. Put some respect on that name. Sorry, guys. I'm Quibby this week, and. uh <laughs> You know what? Taking this one slow. We'll see if it pans out, but uh, at least get ready to call me Quibby for a little bit. Um, but yeah, speaking of things to call people and things about people and whatever, uh, DJ, do you have anything to plug uh, of your own? I, I got I got a, a, a few things. So one, I want to give a shout out to uh, someone on the Discord, uh, Max Level Bread. Oh, um, yeah. He That's is. That's the bread like, that you're recommending. No. Yeah. Yeah. If, <laughs> Max has some great bread. Uh, so he's about to be a dad. So welcome to the dad club. But he is about to be three times the dad I am because he's having triplets, which wow. like blowing my effing mind. That is like salute to you, sir. Salute to your wife. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge for both of them in the days to come for the right now. <laughs> I salute his wife. She's about to yeah. have a rough time of things. This is the house that Zack Snyder thinks is watching Rebel Moon. This five person <laughs> house. They're like, they're going to love it. I just it's like assume it's a one person on his phone in the gym or whatever. And five people at home, including three toddlers. <laughs> yeah, there's there's three newborns like in their bassinets, like just like, oh, we, we sleep so much. But also Rebel Moon, yeah. our few waking minutes are spent watching Rebel Moon. The toddler's Zach first Snyder's word like is, wait, why did she join the team? <laughs> did we miss a scene say the toddlers <laughs> i love nemesis yeah my favorite da daddy please buy me some the swords nemesis mm -hmm. swords i want those nemesis please machetes but red branded rebel moon merchandise you guys don't know how close i was to bringing rebel moon merchandise to one of dj's <laughs> things recently but it was so boring that i couldn't i couldn't stomach spending like 15 dollars on rebel moon branded cheese puffs but I had them in my car at Target the other day, I promise. But I, I ended up not doing it. Anyway, triplets. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so congrats. That's crazy, dude. I I, I, I cannot imagine. Um, wow. Uh well so, imagine what you've done already, but multiply it by three. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine I, it. I, I don't think that's how that works, but um Who, who yeah. are famous triplets in movies and stuff? What's the best set of triplets you could possibly aspire to be? Huey, Dewey, and Louie, probably. They're pretty cool. Yeah. They're kind Are of the a handful. chipmunks triplets? The two chipmunks? It's a good question. No, there's three chipmunks. No, there's three of them. Alvin, Theo, and uh, Simon. Oh, those chipmunks. Oh, you, you're thinking about Chip and Dale. I was yeah. thinking about Chip oh, and Dale. Oh, no, sorry. I mean, they no, are. Sorry. I don't even think they're related. Uh yeah, but are, are the three chipmunks triplets? I would say they're, he definitely calls them brothers, and they seem to be the same age. Yeah, yeah so, and I, I, I would imagine they came from, like, a litter or so. The same way right. that, like, the Aristocats are also probably triplets, even though yeah, that's, that's not true. spoken. Um, so, yeah, why is it always animal? I mean, I guess because of litters and stuff. 
I mean, yeah, it's I, I can't even think of a real life famous triplet like. I, that's tough. Now, now there's it's, room. It's so rare. There's, also, there's like, an option for that to happen for this to be because right? there there's the Olsen twins and her sister, but again, the sister's much younger. Yeah, so, like you know, you got the Jonas Brothers, but that you know, they're not triplets. So. Oh wait, okay, hold on. This is these are movies tagged with triplets. Is Encanto have triplets? Are the moms like it? all is Bruno and the other two older women? Oh, are they triplets? Yeah, I guess they're yeah. triplets because in the yeah, okay. in the flashback, she's carrying them yeah. all as babies. Yeah. So, so there's that. Right. And then this is us is the other one that's tagged there that I'm like, oh, yeah, they're triplets in that. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. And Shrek has triplets. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's the that real life. Those real life triplets. Who yeah. Got separated at birth. That's so crazy. I keep forgetting that's a real thing. But it is. Yeah. So don't do that. So. You know, keep them all and uh, make them yeah, wear different it, colored shirts so you always know which is which. Give them all a decided, sh- like you're the red shirt one, the green shirt one, the blue shirt one. Uh, that seems to be the best way to keep them, uh, you know, keep track of them. Yeah, I agree with that one. And- um, all right. So, uh, yeah, shout out. Uh, congrats. Uh, salute to you guys. Uh, also, everyone. So by the time this is aired, yeah. the... Uh, yeah. Mar- what I was, I know what you're gonna say, and I'm like, yeah, there's no way this is getting out before that starts. But uh, no, no, no. no. So yeah, uh, uh, March Madness is kicked off. Uh, thank you to everyone who has named your brackets movies. Um, it's not too late to. So there's two things. One, you could, I think you could rename your bracket after yes. you've uh, started. So like, if you want to pivot the movie or whatever, or if you all want to do some insane thing, like I think the Discord might go crazy again. Um, like do that. Also, if for some reason you have a bracket made in ESPN, you could join the most significant group. Mm-hmm. So it's not too late to do that. The only thing you can't do is make a new bracket. So if you haven't joined the group, but you made a bracket, you can join the group, um, which is it's pinned on the Discord, and you could pivot the movie name if you so wish. Have you guys perused um, the names? I have. There's some, There's some wild doozies. Ones. Diggins, have you looked? No. Why Speaking would I of- look at these sports? Speaking of my son Hunter, he shows up on the list. Oh hell yeah! Death Note <laughs> seems to have a pretty heavy showing. Evan Hansen yeah. has shown up at least a couple times. Oh, uh, I want to again. Voyage yeah, of the Dawn means. Treader. That's a fun one. Um, uh, the, the Guardians of Cahul. That yeah. Was on there. Um, M- Michelle put the House Bunny for hers. Oh, I've seen House Bunny. Um, yeah, she, she, I, I've never seen it, but, uh, she, she was going to do, she's the man, but she watched it recently. And she's like, this is not aged well. And I don't want to put you guys really? in that. So. She's the man hasn't aged well. <laughs> what about lady ballers? Can she have Shocking. us do lady ballers? <laughs> Someone has a lame is from 2012. That's a fun one. Oh, <laughs> Singing man. Russell Crowe. Uh, yeah. Did you, DJ, what's yours? Did you have one in there? So I I uh, I guess by the time this will be up, I'll, I'll put the name in. But uh, someone called out that I didn't change it on the uh, thing. But I'm gonna put two because it's an election year. I'm gonna do my two favorite oh, election based movies. Yep. I'm gonna do a head of state and swing vote. Mm, head of state. I like that movie. I know. Yeah. Oh man, I used to watch that movie a lot. I can't remember that character's name, but it's a name that if you said oh, it, it would either. flashes would come I, back to me. Um. Um. Yeah. Now I'm curious. I've got a because we did the men's in the women's bracket. So for the men's bracket, yep. I've got Electra, and for the women's bracket, I've That's got good. Blade Trinity. Because both of these, I assume, will be done right around when Deadpool comes out. So if we want two fun okay. Deadpool yeah. lead-ins, Electra and the Blade that he's in, uh, probably fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Maze Gillum. Yes, that's right, Maze. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a funny first name. Um. Um. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll keep updated each episode with how it's going because we got about three weeks of this. Um, so best of luck to everyone. And then uh, last thing, check out Roses and Rejections. Uh, did uh, uh, Women Tell Off for Bachelor um, finale is coming up. Uh, probably be out maybe a little bit after when this podcast comes out. We'll have the finale, and then we get to do our like off season stuff. I think we're gonna do. There's there's two shows. One is called Traitors. Oh yeah, it's on Peacock. It's on Peacock, where good shows are. Uh, season two features a former bachelor, so oh. um, good tie-in. And then I think this show's also on Peacock. I think Michelle saw it during like a Peacock ad while she was watching something. The show's called Couple the Thruple, where they bring oh, a bunch no. of couples who are like, you know, 
all into just like basically pansexual, bisexual, whatever, and they see if they could thruple up and be in a polyamorous relationship. I think so, Michelle's trying to tell you something. Yeah. I hope not. She wants to go live in a house of villains and and then uh <laughs> yeah, yeah try everybody. to find the third. Yeah. My my thing with yeah. that is like I'm sure there's no like there's nothing weird about the thruples thing, but like I cannot imagine it works out well for these couples on the show. It would be pretty boring no, if they yeah. all have healthy relationships that continue. Well, that's like the ultimatum, right? Yeah. Like, you just watch it for the plane crash. Oh, <laughs> well, oh, but yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the ultimatum has a premise that is inherently psychopathic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not going to end up on that show. Like, it is impossible to be on that show if you have a healthy relationship. You would not right. end up there otherwise. Mm-hmm. Right, right, this right. one I could imagine a healthy couple slipping in. All right, that's fair. I mean, maybe they'd make it out. Maybe they'd Maybe it would work for them. I've heard good things about Traders too. I've also never watched it. Yeah, I, I really uh, want to watch it. Nightcrawler himself, mm-hmm. um, Alan Cumming. So that's yeah. fun. Um, so uh, that's everything on my end. Diggins, how about you? Uh, nope. What about you, Nando? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm watching a couple of the Thruple probably tonight or tomorrow. I got to see it. Um, <laughs> it is on Peacock, by the way. Um, I don't. I I don't like the looks of this this couple. So I don't think things are going to go well for them. I'm just, I what feel dangerous. I mean, I haven't, I can't even tell who's a thruple. They're all just standing next to each other. I guess you go one, two, three, that's a thruple. One, two, three, that's a thruple. But either way, um, videos, uh, have my video that is going to go out later today on YouTube, but it's on, uh, Nebula now. That's my, uh, who is Cannonball. Cannonball is an interesting character. Like there's more to him than you would expect, um, from the new mutants, but also from comics that are, you know, not that movie. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is uh, something you can watch. I'll also almost certainly have my next video out pretty soon. That'll be my, uh, it, um, what is it called? In defense of the DCEU part two on YouTube. And that will be the James Gunn years. Uh, and then uh, th- when that goes up on YouTube on Nebula in defense of the DCEU part three, the lost kingdom will be the last one. And that's all the stuff that came out since black Adam. So that'll be fun. Um, and then after that, other videos, who knows? Um, I really do want to do one on Madam Web, but I have to, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, I'll say also, and I don't think this will be out before then. You know what? It actually might be. Um, I'm going to be at PAX East this weekend. Um, so Friday. Um, yeah, I'm just going off because I have, I turned out of a wedding on that Saturday that I'm, that I'm also going to. Um, In Boston? Nope. <laughs> In Texas. Uh, oh. <laughs> pretty far from Boston, but it is, um, it's a wedding that I'm going to go to. So I'm going to go to it. Uh, but we, <laughs> so I'll be at PAX on Friday. We have a panel with, um, uh, extra credits. We're doing one about video game movies, just trying to figure out like what's going on. Uh, it doesn't hurt that that weird Borderlands trailer came out the other day and they've been showing clips of fallout recently. Um, and I know it's just movies, but I'm sure I'll plug the Halo show that I still think is good, even though I understand what people don't like about it. Uh, I, I do quite enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Uh, yeah, until then, next week, uh, Ghostbusters, Ice Planet, uh, Frozen Nightmare. It's called now. Whatever it's called, yeah. Uh, until then, I've been at Nando V Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is An Odd Man. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Woo!